Hello there, very good morning to you, You're watching Sewing Street, and my name is Debbie Shaw, and we are here, we, oh, here we go. We are here, I went all posh then, we are here, um, live for the next four hours. I'm going to be joined by Sarah Bowler in just a second. We're going to be doing a little bit of uh, patchwork and bag making, and we've got some great kits for you as well. Um, so if you'd like to come and join us, do feel free. You can drop us an email if you like to studio at sewingstreet.com. Or you can visit us on Facebook, and actually you can watch us on Facebook as well. So I'm just, just checking that we're here. Are we there? There we are. Um, now, there's the, the bit on Facebook where you leave messages on community. I'm not there now. I'm underneath the video is where I am. Um, so if you've got any comments that you'd like to leave, then just put them right underneath the video. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Where in the world are you? What are you up to? What are you sewing? Have you got any requests? Would you like to share a picture or just come and say hello? It'd be lovely to hear from you and have your company this morning. Um, all right, now then, because you've joined us nice and early, we do this every day. We bring you a special offer. Um, we call it an early bird. They tend to sell out ever so quickly, just to warn you. Um, and today we have the Osnaberg um, natural seeded cotton fabric. This is normally with like calico type of fabrics, you think about um, making toiles, the kind of thing that you, you need a little bit of scrap fabric that's affordable. Um, but this is an awful lot softer than you imagine just a calico to be. And the little flecks in it are seeded, so this is unbleached and it's natural. It looks really, really organic, um, but it's really useful. So you could be making um, rustic items for your home. It could be aprons, um, could be things for the garden, maybe cushion, uh, cushion covers for the garden furniture, bag linings, absolutely perfect. It's a really good sturdy fabric. And it's very much kind of on trend, these organic type of fabrics nowadays. Um, now at £6.50, you're saving a pound. The thing is, and that's a metre and a half, there is method in our madness here. Let me show you the size that you're getting. Because you're spending three ninety-five on postage. That's, that's half the price of your early bird, isn't it? But there again, once you've spent that three ninety-five on postage, you don't have any more postage to pay for the whole of the rest of the day. So make sure you go through to checkout and, and bag yourself a bargain. And then if you want to come back later on and order anything from a sewing machine to a book or fabrics, we've got kits in the last hour, then um, you don't pay any extra for your postage. It's like PMP free for the rest of the day. Uh, that's a really good deal, isn't it? So if you'd like to order, you can order on the phone lines, which is 0800 001 4433, and that's the free UK-based helpline. Or you can go to our website, which is Sewing Street. Dot com. When you go there, this is what you're going to see. So don't worry that it will say jewellery maker because we're, we're all together. We're all one big happy family. And at the moment, we're sharing a website with them. So this is what you're going to see. That, that's jewellery maker. But in the bar at the top, if you put all the wsewingstreet.com and then you'll still see jewellery maker there, but it'll take you to Sewing Street. So you can click play, you can watch us there. Underneath there, you'll see products that we have in the show for you. And that's the way that you can place your order as well. And in fact, there are um, categories in there as well. So you can go into different categories. If it's just fabric you want to look at, or if it's just tools, or if it's just books that you want to see, then of course you can do that as well. So now then, everything that we have on the show for you today, normally everything is right underneath that video. Um, but today they're not quite in order. So it's really simple. All you need to do is to either take notice of the item number that will, will appear here. Um, that's the one, ISXC51 for the early bird, for instance. Or you can put Osnaberg in there or the name of the product in the search bar. And that'll take you straight to the product that you want to buy as well. So it's really, really easy. Um, and if you just, oh, if you search early bird, because not all of us can spell Osnaberg off the top of our heads. Um, if you put early bird in there, you may see a few extra little early birds. They're supposed to only last for a day, then the price goes up. But you know, sometimes people forget to do things and they stay there. So you can still get a really special offer if you're, if you're savvy like that. So have we got everybody here yet this morning? I haven't got any comments yet, have we? 
Or have, oh, we're 14 of you, lovely. Right, so morning, Maria. I know it's a bit odd on a Thursday. I'm here tomorrow as well. I'm not here on Sunday. It's all a bit topsy turvy. Morning, Joan. Morning, Hilary. Morning, Gladys in Birmingham. Morning, Carol. Sewing baby quilts. Morning, Denise. Thank you. Morning from Preston. Morning, Judith. And uh, Kirsty, dull and damp in North. Oh, I know it was for me this morning. Got a bit wet this morning. Veronica's in Grimsby. Glenis is here. Uh, morning, Lorraine. Morning, Leslie. Love to have you all here. Yeah. Um, do it now. Do we have Anne, Annie, Anna in Australia? She was going to set her alarm for five o'clock this afternoon and come and join us today. I'm going to say hello to Jane in Denmark, although she's not watching now, she'll have to watch back later because apparently in Denmark there's a little bit of we're out of sync, so we're, we're not watchable in Denmark apparently. Um, but yeah, hello to you wherever you are. Okay, now let's move on because I'm not on my own this morning and Sarah's going to get bored. Um, the book that she's going to be working from today is so cute, Quilts and Gifts. So let me show you the kind of thing that you can be making. So in here, you've got your brief introduction and I oh, want the pretty fabrics, aren't they? I'll have a quick flick through. So you're going to be able to make very easily some really pretty, oh, we're thinking about Christmas presents yet. Are you having a handmade Christmas this year? What kind of things are you going to be making? That's the yo-yo bag that we're going to be featuring. You've probably seen them here already. Um, so, oh, a blooming yo-yo pouch. <laughs> Dancing flowers, per purse, little bit of pouch. So there's lots of techniques in here as well. Um, but things that are kind of smaller projects and achievable. So certainly if you're a, a beginner sewer, um, and you find the thought of making a full-size bed quilt rather daunting, then these are great ways to get into patchwork and quilting. Um, oh, that's pretty. I've not seen a strawberry wreath before. All year round wreath, strawberry corsage. You can make pattern weights out of those, couldn't you? So little frames, grape ornaments. So bags, purses, and things for around the home. And of course, there are quilts in there as well, but. Um, you can work your way up to that if you're a beginner and you've got your patterns in the back there as well which are full size there's quite a big pattern sheet in the back of the book um, so that's £12.99 we've put together some bundles for you as well so this is the bundle that this one has been made out of um, you'll need your extra scraps of your own to make the yo-yos if you want to put those on you don't don't have to add those if you don't want to so here so obviously you've seen it before, but it did actually sell out completely last time around. You have a metre of white fabric, you have half a metre of the stars, and then you've got a metre of fusible fleece, that's a metre square, you'll have quite a bit left over, and you've got a bit of rickrack that goes on the handles. But you, could, you could actually leave it off the handles and put it round the top, is that big enough? Plenty. So do as you like with it. That's all £20.99. But you'll need to search yo-yo <laughs> or bucket <laughs> or red stars or of course the code that's on your screen there. Uh, let's move on. Should we do this one? This is the one that Sarah's going to be demoing with. Now this time again you have your meter but you've got three fabrics and there's half a meter of each. So there's the floral, that's Henry Glass, and then you've got the cream and the sage solids and your rick rack. And that's £24.99. So that's brand new for you today. Go so well together, don't they? So would you do the stripes out of those and that one as a line? I think I'd do the stripes out of those and have that one as the lining. Or you could all use all three for the stripes. It's up to you. I think you'll have a bit left over from that as well. Then we have green polka dots. So this time again, you have a metre of the cream fabric, half a metre of the polka dots, rick rack. Uh, I wonder why it's called rick rack. I might Google it. And then you have um, your metre again of your H640 for £20.99, that one. And oh, Angela's looking forward to the show. Hello. Oh, she's got a 780 machine. Get you, she's doing the first bit of quilting with it. Let us know how you get on. And put pictures of your quilt on there when you finish it as well. I'd love to see it. 
This is a tilde bundle, so half a metre of tilde floral, and then you have the turquoise spot and the cream, half a metre of each of those, and your H640 and your rickrack for £23.99. Right, so that's all of the bundles. This is the bag that Sarah made earlier using the tilde bundle. And what was quite nice, I like the, the two-tone lining on it as well. Look, you've got a, got a like a border around the top of the lining. Oh, lovely. Oh, you'll need your own magnetic snap if you're going to use one of those as well. Okay. So, um, again, if you'd like to order from us, a couple of ways of doing that. Let's um, go over to Vixen, she'll give you more details, and then we'll bring Sarah in, and let's get sewing. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Welcome back again, and welcome back again to you. It's the first time we've done a show together, it isn't is, it? It is, yes. Yes. Lovely to meet you. Um, and you. With, with the book, first of all, how easy did you find it to follow? Um, very easy. Um, it's lovely pictures in there and quite clear instructions. So, um, so yeah, it was a good one, yeah. I, I love the I love the fabrics that have been used. Actually, they're, they're really pretty projects. Yeah, aren't they? they're really like ditzy, aren't they? Yeah, um, and sort of reminded me a little bit of um, not that I want to go down the doll road again. But <laughs> you remember Sarah Kay in the sort of seventies, eighties, yes. and because she uses a lot of those sort of like doll imagery and things in here. So are, are they like the sunbonnet Sioux type? Mm. Things. Yeah, and I guess yeah. it's like the Japanese um, influence. But equally, what I found with this, I've made quite a few of these bags now, as you can imagine. It works really well with other fabrics, like I've made it in William Morris. Um, I've done a rainbow fabric. So you don't have to go floral ditzy and put the yo-yos on if you don't want to do that. So yeah. it's a really nice pattern. I, I suppose you could use anything like denim or canvas or yeah. any kind of fabric. Yeah. So you can... And I was thinking, I haven't done it yet actually, but you could use the bosal because I know we've got the H640 in the kit. Yeah. But that would give it more structure. And then, because I tend to use them more as probably storage bags rather than a, a bag. Although I know um, one of the fans, Jeanette, if you're watching, she uses it to take her lunch to work. So oh, really? She uses it every day, yeah. You have a big lunch, Jeanette, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> There's a fair few sandwiches in there. Oh, all your secrets are out now, Jeanette. <laughs> oh, but you could use um, a thermalam. Yes. Couldn't you yes, make it insulated? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Right, where, where would you like to start? Okay, yeah. So first of all, then, the, the pattern. If I just briefly talk through, because it's one of those ones where you do need to trace off. And I know if people are a bit like me, we think, oh, well, you know, we'll skip that step. But really, you do need to do that because A, it's double sided. So if you want to make other projects, you're going to be struggling. But also, you need to include your seam allowance on here as well. Now, obviously, if you don't, then you'll just be making a slightly smaller bag. And I guess the key is to be consistent. So if you're not going to put your, your seam allowance on, don't put it on any of the pieces. Okay. But it's not too bad if you've just got, you know, a quarter inch um, around there. You can quickly do that. So basically, those are your pieces. So you've got the panels and then you have the whole piece, which becomes the lining. You've got your bottom and then you've got a circle for the yo-yos. The handles, there isn't a pattern for those, but it gives you the measurements for the, the rectangle. So trace those off and do you can use um, a light box. You could do, yeah. I, I haven't got one, but... Um, but well, I, you, should, you should get a light one. No, it's on my <laughs> list. <laughs> um, if anyone knew somewhere that sold them. <laughs> mm, I wonder. But um, 
yeah, I just used, you can just use A4 paper because they're quite small sizes or you could use your freezer paper or dressmaking paper, that sort of thing. So trace them off and then what you do is the book gives you instructions as to how to arrange them. So obviously we've got some nice bundles and like you said, Debbie, you can play around with the fabrics and, and have them arranged what suits you really. So I've gone with the, the floral and then the plain here that you can you could do it you've got enough fabric to do it all in one and then have the lining of something else oh, yes. in fact i've got a sample that i'll show you later of, of how effective that can look because it cuts out some steps and just gives you a different look to the bag so first of all then we'll cut out you cut out your pieces which i've done here and then let's say the, the book explains to you how you arrange them so it's all quite clear and you were just going to sew them together like you would right sides together. So we'll quickly do that. And Meanwhile, Linda loves the spotty bag. Um, Kay loves the bag as well. Oh. The website's still showing yesterday's products, apparently. Um, you need to search yo-yo or search quilt or if you search what you're looking for, then you should go to get straight there. Um, Sam says, can you no longer watch live from the website? I think we're, we're, yeah, we're live on the website, we're still there. Um, yeah, Eileen, you need to search the name again, she says you can't find the items on the website, they are still there, but you need to put them into a search bar. Um, oh, Rosalind wants to, to see a mitered corner. How about in the last hour? Should we do that in the last hour? Okay. And Sue wants to know how to sew Rick Rack. A couple of ways of doing that. We could do that in the last hour as well, if you like. Um, and we're tackling yeah. themes in the next one. Um, themes. <laughs> we're doing themes, wow. Uh, <laughs> we're doing the Y theme. Oh, so, yes. On the sewing machine. Yeah, fingers crossed, yeah. So, so I'm just opening. Um, what time? Well, it's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, yeah. I'm just pressing them open, like so. And then... Then literally just sew these two together and we've got one side of the bag and you, you do two of those to get the front and the back. You can pin but I don't think you need to. Or you could use clips which is probably what we tend to use when we're making bags isn't it? So there's no pressure making a bag with, with you at the side there Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry I'm not taking any notice of what you're doing anyway. <laughs> well, it could be worse, it could be one of your bags. <laughs> Thing do you enjoy making most? Um, I think probably I quite like the quilting because I find it a bit more forgiving, especially the way I sort of do it. <laughs> um, I do like dressmaking, but you know it takes a little bit more time. Um, but I just like to try. I like most things, really. I like making bags. Um, I got the embellisher. I think I mentioned earlier. Yes, I love that. Um, so I can spend quite a few hours just playing around and experimenting. But I just love sewing in general, so a bit of hand sewing maybe, a bit of embroidery. I like to try it all. And I think when you're new to sewing, you, you just do, don't you? Because yeah. quite often you see people who will say, oh, I'm a dressmaker, I've never quilted. Yeah. And I can't imagine, I've imagine, been sewing for two years. I can't imagine two any... Two years? Kidding, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, like properly. I mean, when I think back, um, when I was sort of a teenager, I did have a sewing machine and uh, I did dabble a little bit then. But then I went into paper crafting, so oh. literally I'm fairly new to sewing as a, as a hobby. But yeah, I want to do it all now and vice versa, you'll see people who quilt and they say, oh, I would never dress make. But I think, oh, you should, because we've got all the equipment, haven't yeah. we? And yeah. Things. Anyway, back to the plot. <laughs> so that's the one of the uh, the sides done so next what we're going to do is so you'll have two of those and um, we're going to make a sandwich as so we do like to oh, make do you sandwich. want a lunch bag should we borrow Jeanette yes I'm going to say that'd be lovely wouldn't it <laughs> <laughs> so this is where the H640 comes into and you've got loads in the kit literally I think I worked out you could definitely make two bags maybe even a bit more so oh, okay it's always good to have extra in the stash isn't it so we will put onto the the rough side of the H640 our top of the fabric and then I've just used an old piece of shirting or you could use some calico or something just to complete the sandwich 
underneath like so. So we'll get the iron and we'll just quickly press show how easy it is because it's lovely the H640 for bag making isn't it? it? It's nice because it'll give you bag you've got structure with it but it's still soft yeah but it will you know it does it does make a bag kind of stand up it makes them feel more luxurious I think you couldn't mm. have a, a bag without some kind of interfacing. No definitely and when it comes to the handles in the book it doesn't tell you to use any um, wadding but I did actually on that one yeah so nice. just thought it adds a little bit extra so this is your lockdown project, wasn't it? It is. I mean, last time I made this for Sewing Street, I was in my kitchen. In fact, it was lovely because I was at my, I'd got the, the fridge, my wine cooler under there. <laughs> I got Chris cupboard under there. And it was only 10 o'clock in the morning. Coffee machine over there. And I feel like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, actually, my husband was cursing me. Cause I think it took us about four hours to film 20 minutes worth of. <laughs> but anyway, you know, there was nothing else to do during lockdown, was there? So... <laughs> So basically that's your sandwich and then what you could do, or I would do, but I won't today, is you could just put some um, 505 or some basting spray underneath there and that makes it all nice and flat and secure. Okay. So now we're going to do some quilting, or straight line quilting at least. I've uh, got some prepped. So You're so organised though. So. Oh well, I don't know. I think... I think, again, when you're new to something, you prepping is all part of the enjoyment, isn't it? And you just sort of, like, enjoy playing. And So, basically, the book tells you how to quilt. So, they show diagonal lines here. And this is that nice, I don't know whether you call it, like, echo quilting, because if you're new to quilting, you don't need a free motion foot. You're just using the uh, foot of, on, your, on your machine. I did have my... Um, oh, Walking Watching foot, foot. Walking, walking foot, foot on, but you don't need it on, so we, we won't use it today, but I did for this. So I did the diagonals and then the um, vertical lines down here. But again, literally, you could do a stipple, like a meandering thing. Yeah. I was thinking if you didn't even want to go, you could use some of your fancy stitches on your machine and just run along, and, um, not stitching the ditch, but just sort of echo your seams or something, or do whatever you want, really. But the closer you quilt, the denser... And the more structure you get, I think, to your bag, don't yeah. you? So I think it is quite nice to, to put um, quite a few bit of lines on. So I'll just change my foot over. The um, fabrics that um, Sarah's working with are the most popular, by the way. Remember, you've got to search Yo-Yo or search Book It because you're not going to see the products directly under the video like you normally do on the website. Um, who else have we got then? Lorraine. Hi, morning, Lorraine. Um, oh, Alan's with us, a king of sewing, Alan. <laughs> Mm, that's, what his, that's what his mates call him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we won't go you and, you and your waistcoats and your v-neck, Alan, I don't know. Um, hi, Susie, loving watching the show this morning. Oh, she's got the book already. Yeah. Lots of lovely patterns yeah, in lovely. there. Um, and Caroline, she's on the way to school, first day back since March. Um, I think we're up to date there. I'm just show you um, some of the projects in the book really quickly while Sarah's so saying. Because they're, they're really um, achievable kind of projects, these. But they're so pretty. Um, if you search so cute on the website, or of course the, the item number, which is UP, UYPU98. If you can't remember that, just put so cute in there. And, uh, and it'll come up with the book. And... Atsuko Matsuyama is your author's name. So, yeah, search that. <laughs> Can you spell that? <laughs> yeah. But lots of instructions, lots of step-by-steps, lots of diagrams on there as well. So it's a very clear um, book to actually understand. I like lots of either diagrams or photos. I don't mind. Um, but more pictures than words, I think, is understandable for for most of us, but you can see how clear that's all laid out. But they're just really easy projects, yeah. nice simple projects. Nice little, there's some nice little coin purses and things in there as well, which would go well with this. Yeah. So we're just literally, not very straight this morning, but if I was at home, I might be wearing my little quilting gloves as well, so I quite like those. And I've always got my extension table on at home. Yes. I do like that, so I'll just keep going with this. 
I think we've got quilting gloves on the website. They, it, it's surprising actually how, yeah, I've seen what them. a difference they make. Yeah. This is so easy, I think, isn't it? But yeah, I remember when I first tried them, I thought, oh, I don't think I need them. But then, actually, it does help, even on a small project. I mean, obviously, yeah. if you're doing a big quilt, you definitely need them. But on a small project, it's nice just to get that grip. And yeah. So I've got some nice... So what rekindled, rekindled your love of sewing a couple of years ago? Um, I literally went on a, a workshop up in the northeast. In fact, if she's watching, it was Debbie Martin who was running it. Oh, um, right. So good morning, Debbie, because I know she does watch. And she's a crafter as well, but she also did sewing. And she just said, oh, let's do a sewing workshop. And I was a bit unsure because I thought, oh, I had a machine, but I can't really sew. But I went on it and just instantly was hooked. Um, we did some fabric painting and we made an apron. And I think what appeals to me, and this may be to other crafters, is that you know you can make so many cards and you do scrapbooks and things, but it's nice to make something that you can keep or wear yeah. or that's whereas I got to the stage where I have boxes and boxes of cards, Christmas cards, tags. And as soon as I discovered sewing, I thought, oh, this is great. I'm going to make cushions. I'm going to make a quilt. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, I love it. I just grabbed some scissors. I can grab some over here. Any of these? The, the pink inches, the white ones oh, are quite nice. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Sorry for the stretch. Oh, did you notice the cushion while Sarah's over there? That's, mm. um, that's your Y seam technique. It is. Ten, isn't it? So I'm just going to neaten up the edges now on here. So you could use your rotary tool if you wanted to, but let's quickly go around. Can we say hello to Emily? Karen says, please say hello to Emily, my granddaughter. She met you in Preston. Oh, and you gave her Aww. one of your bags. Oh, I remember that. Hi, Emily. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I must admit, I've made quite a few of these bags for um, friends for gifts and things because they're just such a nice bag say if you, you can use it for storage and yeah it's got a few of these tags on I knew you could make the straps longer and make them into shoulder straps if you preferred as well yeah in fact one of the samples if I get time to show um, I've used some of the webbing rather than making the the, uh, the handles yeah so that's one of the sides and then as if by magic we have <laughs> the other one so what we're going to do now is sew them together down the sides so it's right sides together Excuse the, uh, you know, when I'm using backings, I just literally use whatever I've got. So sometimes they don't match. You know, it might even be an old duvet or something. But you're not going to see it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Exactly, yeah. So again, you could pin. I'll just make sure it's roughly. It's quite a forgiving bag, she says. I'm going to watch at the end now when I can't get my, my base in. But that will be fine. Just do a little reverse back on that one. And straight. I, I, make, um, I make a lot of bags, you might, might have noticed. Yeah, I had noticed, um, But I like figuring things out. So yeah. I like coming up with an idea for a bag or seeing a bag that I could, I'd, I'd like one similar to that. And how to get the pockets in there and yeah. maybe want elasticated pockets or zip pockets and patch pockets and how am I going to fasten it or shall I have a fastening? And I, I like kind of the yeah. maths behind it. Yeah, I've heard you say that, which is good because I'm the opposite. That just totally fathoms me. Really? Whereas I like to pick up a pattern that somebody's already worked it out. Because I think if I had to sit down and do that, I probably wouldn't get the bag finished. <laughs> but everybody's different, aren't they? Yeah. So there we go. I'll just do a little reverse. No. So that's the sides done. So now we're going to put the base, I'll just show you the base in. Now the base have quilted the same way and show, again, you can choose whichever fabric you want, but you can see how that's basically your structure. So it's right sides together. So let's turn that back now. And what I tend to do with bases is put some markers in. So these are gonna be your, your two half markers and I have got a little friction pen under here. So let's fold it in half again, and that will give me a rough quarter marker. And I'll do the same on here, just so when we're pinning it together, we've got something to go at. 
but let's like say it's a quite a forgiving bag and if it doesn't all fit in snugly as is with most things there's ways of making it work so put your base in like so and match up so I've got the mark that I've made there so I'll do the side seams first open them out um, Jan um, will have a chat about shortening your jeans in, in the last hour if that's okay I'm making a mental note of all of these things I'm doing in the last hour so if I forget <laughs> you can be busy come yeah. back and give me a nudge um, Jenny's Jenny's on a market stall waiting for customers is it raining Jen uh, morning Ange in Great Yarmouth and to Sue and to Sylvie Sylvie's enjoying the show oh I know it's quite interesting to see where everybody is what they do when they're watching yeah well there's there's 103 of you watching on Facebook at the moment. Oh. Don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> that was just me oh, and you. there's 2 million watching on TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So that's the four clips in and then normally I would clip it to death but I'll just put an extra couple in today. And also when I, I did the first few I tended to hand baste this and then I found when I was taking it to the machine I could squash it down and the clips weren't getting in the way but obviously we're not going to be doing that on live TV so mm -hmm. we're going to wing it and see how we get on. Oops. So you can see the base is in there roughly. So Pauline's in Malaga. Oh is she? Oh, wow. Tina's enjoying the show. Morning Gabriel, morning Sheena changing overlock blades. Oof. Do you know, I, I, I did that for the first time, I actually um, hit a pin um, and the blade snapped. You would have thought the pin would snap, but the blade snapped. Um, but I did go to the manual and make sure I was doing it properly. Yeah, I've not done that yet, I must admit. But uh... I love that we were, we were chatting before, weren't we, Sarah, about mm. the uh, technology and how things are so instant these days. I love it. When I first started in shopping TV, which was about 16, 17 years ago, we used to have faxes in the studio. Oh, oh yeah. if you'd like, did you want to send us a fax? <laughs> yeah, good old faxes. Yeah. Right, so I'm popping it under the machine. I'll start just off a seam because it just makes it a little bit easier. And keep with the quarter inch. Now, what I have been doing, but I won't today, is I've been using my zipper foot. Um, because I just find it's narrower and I've just got a little bit more control. Yeah. But I think we'll be okay with this one, so let's give it a go. Okay. We'll do a little reverse. Alison's in Scotland. She's got the book too. Oh, um, it's a lovely book. Caroline says, when sewing with faux leather, what needle do you use? Um, if it's the, the faux leather that you've bought from here, um, your universal needle's fine. If it's a little bit heavier, use a denim needle. Don't use a leather needle. Leather needles have got a chisel shape to them, so they make a slit instead of a hole because leather will heal over. Um, and that helps to stop the thread dragging through leather as you're sewing it. Um, not a fan of leather. Um, but your faux leather won't heal. In fact, if you do make holes in it, give it, give it a blast of steam from the back and you might find that it shrinks a little bit, but just your regular needle should be absolutely fine with those. Julie says, morning. Nick has got a broken ankle. How did you do that? Oh. I hope it's not your sewing ankle. <laughs> you do your stop-start button. <laughs> There's yeah. a way around everything. Catherine's just down the coast in air. Right. We're all over the place today. So I'm going round now, if you've got a few, which I think I have, a little pucker every now and again, if you've got the needle down on your machine, that's great because you can just stop and have a little play now and again. You can ease it a little bit if you need to, can't you? Yeah, and in fact, I have been known to just take it off because so long as you secure your stitch, sometimes it's better to do that, isn't it, and readjust it. Yeah, and then go back in. Whereas I think sometimes when we're new, we think, "Oh, I've got to do it all in one take." Yeah, but it's okay to to stop. She says, "Because we're not going to stop today." <laughs> um, so was it half of the stock sold out? Sorry, wasn't wasn't this? Oh, quarter of the stock sold out. That said, the book um, um, half the stock of the bundle sold out. That Sarah's working with. And then remember, if you do want to order anything, you need to search the product. So you can either search the product number, which is over there at the top of your screen, um, or you can search the product name. So if you want the book, search So Cute. 
and if you want the any of the bundles search book it search yo-yo that's it's all there it's just as um oh what was his name eric morecambe said it's all there but it's not in the right order <laughs> well, whilst you're having a search round you'll just find lots of other things as well won't you on there that you you didn't know you needed Oops, put down. It, it is her sewing angle she's broken nikki have you got a start stop button? She fell down a step and she was sober as well. Oh, wow. Mm. Right, I'll just do a little <laughs> reverse back now. I think I've got it all in. Okay, so that's the base done. So I would then give it a good press, but the good thing about using the little prim iron as well is you can actually fit it into the base and yeah. give it a good go round, but. We won't do today, just so we can crack on. I think search I'm prim iron for the prim iron, or search iron. <laughs> we do have those on the uh, on the website as well. And the good thing as well is, if you do have, like, um, if there's a side that you are less happy with for some reason, just make that the back. Yeah. So there's lots of little yep. tips and things you can do. So don't don't panic if you think, oh, you know, it's not as smooth as it could be. So that's that made. Um, I was saying that. Um, Oh, I, I just, uh, sorry, I just saw one of your comments. I do like to give you a name check saying it would look lovely in black and white. Oh, that's Julie. Oh, it would, yeah. That would be quite striking, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very nice, uh, you can experiment and have some fun with this. So the next stage is to make the handles. So as I say, in the book, there's not a pattern to cut out. You're just cutting rectangles. Now you'll notice here, me being from Yorkshire, Mine aren't quite equal because I happen to have just a little six inch piece of fabric left and I thought, I'm not going to cut into, <laughs> it sounds really tight, doesn't it? I'm not going to cut into a big piece. So I thought I'll make that six and just make that longer. But I think uh, the pattern, obviously, you'd make it half and half. But, but there we go, I'd, I'd, I'd swap them over then so that, so that they're not, they don't line up together deliberately, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, on this one, or that one, I made them all in the blue. I just yeah. thought um, that looked as nice. But you can literally make them however you like. And then you're just going to sew the rickrack down the centre. But if I just show you, so basically they're two rectangles sewn together. And then they tell you to fold in half a centimetre either side and then fold it over. And I think I mentioned earlier as well, what I did on that one was I did put some H640 in just to give it a bit more stability. And then we'll top stitch down either side and rip rack at the top. So those are your handles. But certainly have fun and be creative with them. And then Jan Janet's oh. near Alicante, she's watching oh, us Oh gosh. Mm. What's your weather like Jealous. over there? Miserable and wet over here at the moment. Oh, I'm sure the sun is shining in Alicante. So for positioning the handles in the pattern I think it makes reference to there being some markings but I didn't refer back to that I did it by eye or what I tended to do was use the panels here because that way you get quite a symmetrical yeah. um, and also it said about putting the rick rack down I think so that when you lift it up the rick racks on show but because I tend to use these more as storage bags I quite like having the rick rack face in that way so you can see it but Again, it's all personal preference, isn't it? So we're going to baste the handles on before we put the lining on. So, if I, and the key thing is not to twist your handle, but they're such little handles. I think it's easier to twist when they're big, isn't it? Yeah. Let's pop a couple of clips on there. Linda's got five of her grandchildren coming around for the day in a minute. Oh, wow, gosh. You're going to have a busy day. <laughs> yeah. Hats off to you there, yeah. Right, so I'm going to increase the stitch length and just baste these or tack, whatever you want to call it, so that they are within the seam allowance. In fact, I'll go a little bit closer so I don't want to see that at the end. It's sunny and the temperature's rising in Alicante apparently. Wow. I, I don't. I, I think summer's over here, isn't it? I don't, I don't know if we're expecting any more sunshine. I know, I, I will be surprised. Because they always say, don't they, in August that we're going to get an Indian summer, but I don't think, I think 
that's it now. You can tell by the trees, can't you? The, the leaves have all turned. Yeah. And... So we've just based the other side very quickly. So you see how quickly it comes together. Even though I'm basting, I'll do a little reverse stitch because you can never have your handles too secure, can you? And do you sew in the garden when it's nice weather? Um, not really, just because it's um, it's a bit of a faff, I think. I like to read or I look at sewing things in the garden, but I don't really take even hand sewing out and, and things. Mm -hmm. um, I see some amazing pictures of people, they set up stations, don't they, with overlockers and machines, and, but I'm not that organised. I did the ironing in the garden did you? On, a, on a sunny day. Yeah, mm. that was nice. Mm. Very good, I'm <laughs> very impressed. But now I'd just like to chill in the garden. Right, so the lining now. So I've already pieced the lining because I thought of time and it's exactly the same um, talk you through it, process as the bag in so much as you stitch down the sides. You need to leave a turning gap um, about, I don't know, four or five inches, something like that. You, the bottom piece, it's exactly the same piece and it's sewn in exactly the same way with the half and the quarter. And as you can see, I've actually put a clasp on here, but you, you don't need to. I mean, I think it works well without the clasp um, totally. Yeah. So. And I've used the contrasting fabric on this piece here. But again, if you want to save that, you can use, you know, switch it up any which way. I, I like that. It makes, it makes the bag look really expensive, mm -hmm. I think. In fact, I think, I can't remember if it says in the book, but you certainly could use a different fabric for your base as well, because yeah. then it would sort of mirror there. So to insert, so we need to turn this back inside out. And we're going to put the right side bag into, looking at Debbie now for reassurance here, because <laughs> isn't it funny, like, you do things so many times and then you always like question yourself, yeah. don't you? Um, and we'll put them inside each other, which, and then just make sure the handles aren't twisted too much and give it a good pull. And then we're going to clip, do the side seams together. Get the side seam on the lining matched up with the side seam on the bag. Put one in there. And the same over here. Those clips are handy as well, aren't they? Oh, yeah, I love Don't them. Don't what we did before clips. No. Even for like getting my prep together and things like that, they're, they're just like useful for everything. So you can see this seems to fit quite well, but if for some reason it doesn't, because you want this to be really nice and sort of snug as you go around so you don't get any puckers and um, things like that. So if at that point you're not happy with it for whatever reason, I would go back in and if you needed to take a bit more off your lining, go back in and, and adjust your seam allowance or if you needed to take some off your bag even, just because at that stage you want it to just fit nice. Yeah. But so sometimes... It all just depends on how accurate you've been, I guess, with your, your seam allowance, with your cutting. It all adds up and makes a difference, doesn't it? But, as I was saying, this bag is very forgiving because if you do have a bit of a, a wonky moment at the top, it doesn't matter because if you're putting, putting your yo-yos on, just make them higher so that yes. you, you, know, you can cover any bits yeah. that... Um, we all have a, a wonky moment every we now do. and again, don't we? I mean, in the crafting world, we used to say that if you have something that you're not happy with. We used to say, we'll put a butterfly put a, over it. Butterfly, yeah. <laughs> and I guess in the sewing world, you put a button on it. Put a goes... button on it. Now you can put a yo-yo on it. <laughs> so there is the bag. So what I tend to do is I'll go with the free arm on this as well. Just gives me a bit more manoeuvrability. Oops. It's a lovely little machine, isn't it, Miss? It's a really lovely machine. We've got this on the website. This is the 550, so it's a 50 stitch machine. Um, but you... <laughs> It's the most affordable machine that we bring you, but it's still, it's compact, but it packs a punch, if mm. you know what I mean. Yeah. It's take a my, really nice machine. Take my stitch length back down, because I had it on the base stitch, didn't I? And again, start just off a seam or something, because that's where you've got the most of your bulk. And if you've, at this stage, you've already identified where your back is, start at the back. Mm. Um, Dawn's with us this morning. Morning, oh. Dawn. Uh, she's well done, Sarah. 
can't. Fab demo, can't be easy with the bag queen watching. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> um, oh, Carol. Thank Carol you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She means that in the nicest way. <laughs> we have we have Hannah. Hannah and Paul today in my ear. Hannah's just said, at least she didn't say the old bag. Nah. <laughs> uh, Maureen's in Perth, Australia. Morning to you. She says, love the shows. Glad I can watch live now. Um, Carol's having a cuppa in Jarrow. And Anne's in Stockton on Tees. Oh, my, my in-laws are all in Stockton on Tees. Um, Diane's making a bag just like it this morning, but oh. she's, she's loving the weekly sewing lesson. Oh, she's having weekly sewing lessons. Oh, very um, good. Sharon says um, the bag's amazing. She loves how it all comes together. Um, made to look so easy and doable. I am so going to give one of these bags a go. Yeah, it is a really nice say. I've, I've made quite a few now in different ways. And in fact, if my friend Barbara, if you're watching Barbara, it, there'll be one winging its way to you next week. It's a birthday. So it's a good, oh, it's a good bag next week, Barbara. to have, isn't it, for a gift? Because yeah. you can make it. Even if you don't think it's somebody's style to, to use, you could make it to match the interior of the house. Or... Yes. Mm. I, I love the, the versatility of bags like this, though, because you really can make them as you want them. We obviously have very, very upmarket posh viewers this morning because they love the fabrics that you're using, which I think are really classy. Mm. Um, but you can make it fun. You, you, um, Sarah's going to show you a rainbow bag that she made in a bit. Yeah. Um, or you can make it plain. And they're, they're going to look very different, aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely. There we go. Just a little reverse stitch, and there we go. So this is the turning out process, or the bagging out process. We find our. In fact, I remember hearing somebody refer to it. Reversing the bag. <laughs> mm, I don't want to put anybody off their breakfast. <laughs> but I remember thinking. Oh, no, wasn't I, my I, experience of birthing was no. a lot worse than this. But, um, but yes, basically, we're going to turn the bag. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> I see where it comes from. But yeah, no, but yes, yeah. let's uh, erase that image from our minds straight away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you're literally turning through and the, so the bigger the hole, the easier it is to get your bag through as well, isn't it? But then you've got to remember you're stitching it at the end. Yeah. And actually something I could mention is on some of those, I experimented and I sewed my yo-yos on before I turned out. Oh, right, because then you won't see the stitches on yeah. the inside. But the only downside was I did on some of them, ended up catching some of the yo-yos. Oh. But, you know, it's, it's just something different to do. Um, and then I think I was telling you about Jeanette, who used the glue, didn't she? For, yes. Which I hadn't thought of at all, but that is a, such a clever idea. If you use the, um, the Goodman HT2 glue, that, it, that is so strong, you would be hard pushed to pull a yo-yo off if you'd stuck it on with that. Yeah, because when she said glue, I was thinking of my, you know, the glue pen. Done with my, oh, sorry, it's downstairs. <laughs> Found my mat. Um, but I'd forgotten, yes, something like that is really good. So you can see, a bit of clever pressing then the bag comes together really nicely. So I, I like that one without the yo-yos. Yeah. I don't think I'd put them on there. Yeah it's totally preference. I mean if, if you love yo-yos you could put them all over couldn't you? Yeah. I think in the I think she likes yo-yos in there doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's quite a lot of projects with them on but it just depends on your preference. So we'll go all the way around neatening, rolling your edge like you do just to make sure that you get a nice. Sharon's in Australia finish. as well, she's in Brisbane. Loves making bags, she says. Oh, very good. Well, you can never have enough, can you? And I think it's a good way to showcase your lovely fabrics as well, yes. isn't it? Because sometimes, yeah. you know, we they just get folded up and pop, popped away. So you get the idea of, Literally, I also found it was quite, if you've got one of those um, oh, hams, I uh, can't think, sleeve hams, I yes. tended to put, put it in and then you can go round and really, you know, get nice finishes on it. So we would then top stitch all the way around the top. I don't know how we're doing for time. So I'm just going to show yeah. the... Oh, we've got about a minute. <laughs> right, okay, we won't top stitch around there. So let me quickly show you the yo-yos. So if you do decide to to do those then literally it's a circle of fabric 
and the technique is all explained in the book but literally you get a thread don't bother knotting it just keep it nice and long go start upside down and then go literally probably just under a quarter of an inch away from the edge and just literally like a running stitch try and be consistent but doesn't matter really all the way around and of course I've unthreaded my needle now let's see if I can speed you, you'll never thread that first time live on it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen I'm gonna say especially mm, and I haven't even got a but you get the gist of what you would do yeah, I, 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 don't worry about it, Sarah. I think we've, okay. we've got the idea there. So then you just gather it all yeah, up. Yeah, you just it, pull it like it? a shower cap sort yeah. of effect. And in fact, I've got loads that I've done here. And then literally, say so you can arrange them on the bag. And what is good, I've put loads of clips just a little in. cluster in, instead yeah, of having them all having the way around. All. might be quite nice. Yeah, and certainly it's like the pattern. It shows you the um, two rows of um, the yo-yos. But yeah. I quite like just having the one. Sometimes yeah, the less is more, but you get um, the idea of... Just before we finish up, can you show us those other bags that you made? Yes, absolutely. So, very quickly, you may remember we had the uh, the Koi Cart fabric yeah. on it. I think this was like during the lockdown era. So I just used the whole um, the fabric on the whole bag. And I don't know if you can see on the overhead, but I've just done like a stippling, a meandering or whatever you call it. But it looks like a completely different bag, doesn't yeah. it? So that gives it a nice effect. And then inside, I've just done it totally red. And then this one I made as a rainbow bag. And I know you, ha you have this on the website, or you yeah. did have it on the website, this webbing. is really nice. It's a longer handle. And I've put one of my little felted flowers in there. And then I've made like a spotty lining to go in. So it sort of makes it a bit more fun. So yeah. you can literally play around with it. And it's a very versatile pattern. Yeah. So you can personalise it, you could add pockets to it if you wanted to as well, mm -hmm. that's entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, give us a tease of what's coming up at 10 o'clock. So we have behind me here, um, it's a teeny teeny tiny, it's like a sampler I guess isn't it? Yes. But it's called the zigzag quilt and we're going to be demystifying the Y scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I love tumbling blocks. Yeah, it's really clever, isn't it? It, it, it is. It's a very clever effect. Mm. It really gives a dimension to it. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so I'll give you a quick reminder of, uh, of the book and the fabric bundles that we have for you in a couple of minutes. But meanwhile, here's Vix to tell you how to order. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Norma, you've been checking the website and it's still the same products as we had last night. Um, the, the products that we have today aren't coming up in order on the website for some reason. So they are there, but they're not, they're not in their usual place. So anything that you want, you need to just put the product name into the, uh, into the search bar at the top. So yeah, normally we do have all of the products there on time, but today we're a little bit late with them for some reason. Um, so for instance, if you wanted the early bird, type in early bird. And this is what you're going to see. One, I shan't open it all up, but one and a half meters of uh, natural seeded cotton. Um, it's a really nice quality as well. Sometimes these type of fabrics can be stitchy, stitchy, itchy, and scratchy. That's the way you merge those together. You get stitchy, don't you? Um, now you're saving a pound. There's a meter and a half here for six pounds and fifty pence, which is amazing value for money. That's under two pound fifty a meter. Um, for half meter that works out uh, that's that's really good value and it's a little bit better quality than just using this for twirls although of course you could do you could make the whole bag just out of um, 
out of seeded cotton. Oh, well, then you could embroider, you can maybe do some red work or black work on it. Um, or a little bit, of, or you can smock with it. Actually, I've seen samplers before now, just um, with different types of smocking in small panels and then patchwork together. Um, and I've seen that because I've done it myself. Um, so it's really useful fabric, not just for fabric scrap fabric. So if you put if you put early bird into the search engine at the top, these early birds are only supposed to last for a day or while we have the stock, but um, somebody keeps forgetting to take them down. So if you search for early bird, you may find more than you bargain for. You may find a whole flock of seagulls in there. £6.50 if you wanted to get hold of that. I'll give you a reminder of that later on. Um, now with the book that Sarah was using, this is So Cute Quilts and Gifts. You've got actually 30 projects in here and they are, as the title suggests, cute. Um, but they're small achievable projects, so I don't see myself, do we? Um, things that maybe if you're a beginner or if you're teaching somebody how to sew or if you've got the big project, you just like yo-yos. Um, if you've got the big project on the go and you just fancy doing something that you can complete within an afternoon, or if you're sewing together, or if you're in a class, maybe you could all um, make something from the book, the kind of things that you can complete in a shorter time. But there's lots of techniques in here. You can see the bias binding, there's a bit of hand sewing, patchwork, um, and different quilting techniques as well. There are quilts in here as well. Really pretty, isn't it? But you'd imagine this if it was in different coloured fabric, maybe in blues, it looks very, very different. So that's £12.99. pence. You will need to search so cute if you wanted to go for that. And then this is the sage bundle that Sarah was working with. That's your favourite one so far and I'm really not surprised. That is beautiful, classy fabric. And this is what you're going to get in the bundle. So you have your sage plane, then you have your Henry Glass floral, and there's a plain cream. Your rickrack is included and you're getting a meter, which is about a square meter of um, fusible fleece as well, all for £24.99. You'll have a bit left over. Um, we have the red stars, so this is what you're going to be able to make. Adding, of course, your own from your own stash if you wanted to make pom poms, pom poms, uh, yo yo's in different colours. Yeah, pom poms would work. That'd be quite cute, actually, wouldn't it? Pom pom bag, pom pom buggy bag. Um, and in the kit again, you have this time. There's two fabrics, but there is um, a meter of the white and half a meter of the red stars. Search red stars, uh, or just put bucket in there, and all of these kits will come up for you on the website. Rick rack included too. Then we have this one. This is the Tilda one. New for you today. So half a metre of each of three fabrics in this one. So half a metre floral, half a metre spot, half a metre of the cream, rick wrap, and your fusible fleece for 23. I'm going to Google that in the break. Rick wrap. Why is it called rick wrap? Um, and then finally, I've got the green spot. Half a metre, um, a metre, rick rack, and <laughs> it's like a little animal, doesn't it? Rick rack. Uh, and your fusible fleece are 8640, and that's £20.99 for all of those. Do you know, those are such nice bundles of fabric. Even if you don't want to make the bag, um, it's really useful, isn't it? And they go so well together. So if there's something else that you wanted to make with those, then of course that's fine. You can make maybe a, a little girl's skirt and put the rick rack round the hem, rick rack round the hem. The more you say it, the sillier it sounds, doesn't it? Rick rack. <laughs> Um, oh, now then, in the next, we're going to do another bag in the next hour. Um, we've got lots of Tilda fabric coming up, so I'm going to be diving in and making one of the bags from my Cajun Bags book. Um, and that's going to be coming up after the break. So do stay with us. We'll have a, a little bit of a clear up and we'll see you again in a couple of minutes. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page.
there are two ways to shop with us, either via our website, which is www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down past the live program and either click on the Shop Our Catalogue banner to shop via category, or shop today's products by scrolling through the list under the email newsletter sign-up form. The other way to shop is via our UK call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. Hello everyone, my name is Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles. So embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making. Oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new. And I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it. And you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. There are two ways to shop with us, either via our website, which is www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down past the live program and either click on the Shop Our Catalogue banner to shop via category, or shop today's products by scrolling through the list under the email newsletter sign-up form. The other way to shop is via our UK call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say, don't get disheartened. Take your um, learning journey slowly. Don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt. Build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Shh, don't tell anyone, but I'll be on Sewing Street soon. Hello again and welcome back again. Now this hour we're going to be making another bag, different style of bag from one of my occasions bag books with Tilda Fabric. I'll take you through all of those in just a second. Um, there was a question I wanted to answer from um, 
Lorraine saying, would the early bird material be suitable for making rag dolls? Now, if you have a look really closely at the fabric, it's got flecks in it which are from the cotton seed pods. So the colour for um, a rag doll, I think, would be absolutely fine. I wouldn't use it because I, I'd want a plain fabric and not have the flecks in them. But that's entirely up to you. If you're, if you're happy with flecks, flecks on your doll's face, then that's absolutely fine. But some of them are quite, they stand out quite a lot. So. Personally, no, I wouldn't. The quality, oh, sorry, the quality's there, um, but it's just those little flecks that I think I, I wouldn't want those on, on skin. Um, right, you do need to search Early Bird on the website, though. So if you've just joined us, um, if you're a regular, you'll know that just underneath the video on the website, you normally see all of the products that are here today. We've still got yesterday's on there. Um, they are on the website, all of the products from today. You just gotta look for them. So if you search Early Bird in the search bar, um, then, uh, then it'll take you. Um, straight to it, or of course you can order on the phone lines on 0800 001 4433. This is something that um, I think you should be ordering straight away when you see it, if you want it, because we're not going to be bringing this back again. So we have a whole set of the most beautiful Liberty Fat Quarters, which you may or may not have seen before, but we're not going to be getting these back again. Um, it's the last bundle that we're going to be able to bring you. And it's the last, literally the last of the stock. So we weren't supposed to have this today, but you know, we, we, we're doing what we want, really. And I just wanted to show you that because if you've seen it before, don't want you to miss out thinking, oh, I'll come back next week and I might order that Liberty because it probably won't be here. Aren't they gorgeous, classy colours? Blues, deep reds, nice colours to go through the seasons. So floral, but not too summery. Um, and that's my favourite one. And you've got just lots of different types of flowers and poppies and daisies and all kinds of... A, a, it's like a whole bouquet, a Liberty bouquet. Um, this is the size of a fat quarter. I wonder why they're called fat quarter. I, I didn't realise, the first time I heard somebody call it a fat quarter, I thought that's, that's a rude thing to say. But this is basically what you're going to get. And there's what, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a ten of them. The ten. Oh, hooray! The products are underneath us on the web. <laughs> Meaning, if you go to our website now, you won't see yesterday's products there. You'll see today's. So go to sewingstreet.com. You'll see the video of what's going out live now. And underneath there, now you will be able to scroll down without having to search for anything. So, hooray! It happened. Oh gosh, this has gone quickly. We've got two left. Okay, next two people to check out, then uh, then it's going to be yours. And well done because they're not going to be back again. So they're going to go really quickly, aren't they? Uh, Forty-two pounds ninety-nine. Let me count them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, it says on the screen, doesn't it? I could have just read it. Um, for your forty-two pounds and ninety-nine pence. And remember, it's Liberty Winterbourne House fabrics. Really beautiful quality. What are you going to make? A bit of quilting. A bit of bag maker. Oh, imagine the bag from the previous hour. Okay. We have lots of Tilda fabrics for you. Look at all these. Oh, no, we, uh, lots of them. Look. Okay. So, first up, we are going to look at. TPZW67, which is really pretty roses. Do you know, this is one fabric that I, I wouldn't... Uh, normally with Tilda, you can tell, can't you, it's, it's Tilda fabric. I wouldn't have done with this one. This looks more like a Liberty fabric to me. Um, but gorgeous colours, like Wedgwood on an off-white background. Half a metre of Tilda for five ninety nine. That's a good price, isn't it? So this is Tilda Old Rose. Oh, we've only got three metres of that one left now, so that's going to go quickly as well. You, you can order more than um, half metre lengths as well. You can only order three metres if you wanted three metres of this. And it will come to you all in one big long piece. If you wanted more. These are very obviously Tilda, I think. This one is uh, GZG, no it's not, G, 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 J, <laughs> G, J, Z, W32. 
because this is like Tilda Dolph I mean, I've got some different colours I'll take you through the different colours we have for you in this one in just a second but it's like Tilda Angel's doll, uh, dolls isn't it beautiful and this is on like um, a very pale taupe they're calling it sand I'd say it's very pale taupe very like dove grey I think and again that's £5.99 for half a metre so that's that and then it is on the on the grey as well this one's TJZW65 so this is angels on grey those two go really well together actually that would make a nice contrast if you're going to do the flap of a bag in one fabric and um, and the, the body of the bag in another and there we go and then here yeah, the wings I've actually got um, got different prints on them as well which is really pretty so we've got tiny little leaves there and little flowers and let me show you on the, on the purple one while you're there as well because that's that's a lovely colour uh, this one is mauve <laughs> do you want a number for this one no, I think we can do that. Um, but let's see how they go so well together. I love this colour. I, I think it's so classy. I'm not a fan of bright purples, but these more subtle colours, I think, are, are just gorgeous. And then we've got this, like, a, a blush. And again, by the half metre, make nice home wires as well, wouldn't they? So if you've got tilted holes, then they're going to have new frocks. Um, but I'm thinking cushion covers, maybe table runners, nice in children's bedrooms as well, because they've got that doll-like quality to them. I could make a rag doll's dress out of that. That would be pretty. Hmm. Um, blush is the most limited of the angel fabric, so be, be quick if you want the blush one. Then, oh, it's getting getting busy now. You can find everything. The Liberty Fat Quarters have sold out now. More little roses. This one is um, AUZ W71. This one's a little bit more ditzy, but it does get so they're like wreaths of flowers on this one. Such lovely quality Tilda fabric. If you've never used it before, it's it's one of the best. It's really. It's got a nice handle, as they say, smooth handle. And again, that's £5.99, as they all are. And then we have the same design, but with like a, a minty background. So this one is the um, NXZ W27. We're calling it teal. I would say it was mint, but we're calling it teal. Pretty with the uh, little red roses there as well, isn't it? Dainty and ditzy. And we have another one, I think. And yes, we do. We've got a, a paler blue one. Morning, Kimberly. That's my daughter. What are you doing today, hon? <laughs> and then this is the pale blue one. Um, this one is FGZ W92. Now we're calling this one Lavender. Morning Ange. Ange says morning Debs and crew. You're getting a whoop whoop and a knock knock. <laughs> We're a crew of three today. <laughs> um, morning Kathleen. Yeah, we're there now, Dawn. Um, Glennis loves the demos. Morning Jeanette, morning Bonnie, morning, morning Shelley. Uh, Dawn's uh, another Dawn, just back from walking Monty. Monty, Monty, had a nice walk. Oh, would you like a treat now? Yes. Um, this is um, RDZW36. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? That's very elegant. Like tall vases they, they look like um i don't know what they're called sconces is it that you hang on the wall really lovely oh, that's another one of those purples that i do like that's a classy purple with little birds on the top as well oh. so let's pop that away 
and do we have this in a yes we do have another colour of that one have I done I've done that one getting more mixed up now I'm gonna make a bag in a bit didn't realize there were so many so many tildes um gnzw15 that's lovely that's the old rose in in dove I wouldn't I wouldn't say there was any dove in there at all it's on a cream background but hey, if, if, if the Tilda team want to call it Dove, then who am I to argue? Right. Should we do the rest in a bit and do a bit of sewing? Because they're all on the website now. So we've, we've got all these, um, the taupey colours again and the pale blues. That's the one with the geese on it. Geese or ducks? They're ducks. Um, we've got the old rose in different colours. We've got paisley. We've got spots and flowers and all kinds of stuff and more ducks as well. Oh, didn't show you those, did I? Little purse. These are actually kits coming up later on. But using said Tilda fabric, they're sweet, aren't they? That's a, that's a lovely one. Look at that one. Mm. And it wouldn't take very much. You can be able to make a, sh a few bags out of those half metres. Um, I'm going to make just a really quick um, bag from my occasions bag book. If, you've, if you're a regular, you've probably seen these before. If not, then let me show you how it works. This is a folder and the book does come out if you want to take it out. You don't have to. Um, but the reason it's in a folder is because you've actually got plastic templates here. Um, there we go. Let me take those out. So this is how they're going to come to you. I'm trying to open that without ripping it so I can put it back again afterwards. Um, this took, actually there's a whole set of four of these in total and it took quite a long time to bring these templates to you. Figure, it's that figuring out thing that I like doing again. I'll just show you on the mat so that you can see how they work. Um, because from these two templates, you can actually make 15 different styles of bags. So if I show you um, a scalloped bag, for instance, the shape of the scallop is actually here. So you put your fabric on fold and just draw through the line. So there's no patterns to cut out. You can draw directly onto your fabric. You don't need um, to trace anything off or get your light box out or anything like that. You literally draw through the shape that you want. But you could make a curved flap. You could make a round flap. Now with the, the clutch bag here, this is one that I'm going to make. It's got a dart here. So you follow the side. This is on fold again. Follow it round. There's the dart. And there we go around there. If you followed the one around the edge, that will give you a gusset. So this time it's still got the scalloped flap on this one, but then you can see the shape of the outside of the bag is here. And then with the second template, oops, that's the end panel. And then placed on fold is the base. And the straps, there's two different widths of straps, so there's four inches and three inches, and they go on fold here. So it's, it's ever so easy to make a bag. Um, and there are lots of different styles. It could be a little makeup bag, that's the same kind of thing. Um, you can put zips in them. The hole in here actually is a zip hole, it's a zip hole. Um, so that gives you the perfect size for a zip to go inside the bag or on the outside of the bag. And the heart is purely there because there was a big space and I wanted to give you something a little bit extra. So you can um, maybe draw through that and embroider over the top or use it as a piece of patchwork. But if I just give you a quick flick through the book as well, so you can see the type of bags. I'm sure there's going to be more than 15 that you can actually make with it. But these are all of the different styles that, that I've come up with. And of course, then you can use, oh, all about how to use the templates. Um, you could maybe use that flap for a different bag. If you want a scalloped flap on another bag, then you can do that. So when we come to the projects, I'll highlight, so I've got a drawing of all of the templates and I've highlighted the ones that you need to use for each one of the bags. So that makes it easier, I think, to identify them. And then as many photographs as I can possibly stick in there, 
and as many techniques as I can as well. So you, you're going to be learning, um, well, that's applique for starters. Um, there's binding, buttonholes, zip insertion, um, bag making, adjustable straps. That one's got a little bow on the front, which is made from the handle. Uh, raw edge applique. Um, that's made into a wristlet. This one's got a zip in the top instead of at the at the side, so you can do little makeup bags as well. Um, the fringing was quite nice. That made a very glamorous 1970s inspired bag. That was using the heart template, so a little patchwork bag, but with um, just some free motion embroidery I just sewed around the shape. That's the bag with the piping. So the skills that if you're new to sewing that you can learn and use. Oh, the triple pocket bag's quite a fun one to do because um, you don't see any of the seams on the inside. Yep, if you're new to sewing, there's going to be skills that you can learn, and they're, I've tried to make them as easy as I can for you to follow as well. So should we do it? What should we use? I'm going to use this, which is, which is very pretty. Do you know, that would go very nicely. Mmm. So your tilde is, um, oh, um, oh, there we go. I thought my label had dropped off. It is GN7W15. And I'm going to use that. How long have we got? Right. Because I was going to do a little bit of a patchwork one, but I don't think I will because I think it's a shame to, to chop this up. Although that, hmm. Nope, we're going to do the bottom in the early bird, in the Osnaberg, and then we'll do the flap. Or should we do it the other way? Oh, we'll do it the other way. We'll do the body in this and we'll do the flap in that. And then I'll fussy cut one of these shapes out and put it onto the flap. That's it. That's our plan. This is the early bird, remember? One and a half meters, just making bag flaps is going to last you an awful long time. I'll make the lining out of this as well. So I will need two pieces for, I'm going to do the, um, the clutch with the scalloped flap. So I will need unfold. I'll do it up right so you can see how I'm doing it. Um, oh, Kate says the templates are genius. Thank you very much. That, that took a lot of figuring out. So I'll need two flaps, one for the top, one for the bottom. If your fabric is very thick, then the easiest thing to do is to use it with a fabric open, make a mark where the central line is, draw around your pattern, and then flip it over and go from the other side. Um, because if you've got very thick fabric or you've already put wadding on the back of it, um, it's going to, it's not going to measure the same. The top fabric will measure more than the fabric that's on the inside. Um, I'll put it on afterwards. I'll put the because I'm going to use some H640 as well. So this goes on the fold. You could use some grippy spray if you wanted to hold the template down. Um, otherwise, just hang on to it like that. Have we got grippy spray on the website? Not sure if it's in stock. You could use a 404 spray. You could use a 202, but I don't think we've got that one either. And that one, ooh, that goes across the top like that. Oh, we do have grippy spray. Grippy spray will make the template um, grippy, but it doesn't transfer onto fabric. It just stops it slipping around, so that would be useful. Okay, and it's, it's just called grippy. No numbers involved. And then we just cut this out. The seam allowance is included in the pattern. You don't need to add anything. The straight lines you could use a rotary cutter and ruler to cut those if you wanted to. We don't all have them. So. so that's the flap. When you open it up, you can see the shape there. Then I will need two pieces of lining as well. And those are on fold two. So let's fold you there. So I need the one with the dart. Let's move that some, saving a bit more fabric. And it doesn't matter what pen you use. I do this every time, don't I? See, normally... <laughs> normally, it's the lid that I lose. I've got the lid, I've just lost the pen. 
How did I do that? Must be under here somewhere. Ha 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 ha. It's normally scissors I lose at home. I, it's just quite strange because I don't move from behind the sewing machine all day, but things just disappear for some reason. Okay, so I'll need the, the top across here and then down the side. Yeah, so it doesn't really, I'm using a friction pen. It doesn't matter because this is all within the seam allowance. You could use a biro if you wanted to. There we go, whatever stands out against your fabric. So we have that. Let's cut that out. And then I'll need two more pieces with the, the tilde fabric. Don't we love that noise? And we'll cut out that dot through all four layers as well. So you've got that. And then I'll put the fleece on here first, actually. Um, and then we'll do that flipping over malarkey. So if you, oh, if you want the H640, you do get a meter square. This is, this is the, um, the studio stuff, stuff to chop up. Did I cut that too narrow? Oh, perfect. So, knobbly side goes up if you haven't used this before and it's um, a Valiseline one. You can use steam with this. A lot of them will wrinkle with steam, but this one doesn't. I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to get a row of flowers right down the center, but because that would be nice, but I'm not too fussed. Your templates are clear as well. So if you do want to fussy cut, then you can do. And then we'll just hot iron this in place. Morning, Maggie. Um, all chatting amongst yourselves this morning. That would help if I actually use the iron that was switched on. Oh look, it's like, it's like knitting. Okay, that's better. Uh, morning, Andrea. Looking good this morning, Debbie. Um, oh, don't notice, but you're looking five to... Oh, thank you very much. She's just off to walk the dog as well. See you later. Um... <laughs> yeah, Margaret has problems looking for pens as well, by the sounds of things. Um... Oh, Leslie's got all of my bag books. Thank you. So many from the book, but boy, have I used those templates for my own mates. They're invaluable. Thank you very much. Morning, Marcia. Um, Jenny's got all my books as well. Thank you. Oh, hi, Gwen. Thank you. Oh, Rita's in India. I think that's the first time we've had a message from India. Lovely, lovely to have your company this morning, Rita. Um, Glynis has bought the book. Well done. Oh, my granddaughter's watching. Vienna, hi. She wants me to make a bag with a heart. Shall I make a bag for you? Would you like a bag? Going to see you tomorrow, aren't we? It's granddad's birthday on Saturday. So I'm just, just catching up with the family here. Just to, do excuse me. <laughs> she, want, she wants... Um, she wants to give Grandad presents wrapped in Peppa Pig paper, and I think she'd actually like to give him a Peppa Pig as a birthday present. He'd love it. Right. So let me snip this extra fabric off. Now then. Um, oh, lots of you buying these Tilda fabrics. Good for you. Because you can see everything on the website now, which is quite handy, isn't it? Okay, so where's the edge of my fleece here? So that goes there. I didn't quite get those flowers in the centre, but never mind. So I'm going to draw where the edge of this is. I know I'm using a friction pen on fabric. Um, I don't... 
have an issue with it. I've tried it on the fabric before and it hasn't marked. And I don't intend to go anywhere in the freezing cold for it to come back again. But not recommended to use unless you're using it in a seam allowance. Um, so that's that. Flip it over that way and then line it up and do the same again. So that goes there. Oh, just about got enough. In fact, I haven't, I think I've missed a bit of fleece on, I have missed a bit of fleece. Never mind, I'll add some more in a bit. Oh no, I'm doing this one. Wrong one. Might just have enough then. We'll see. Right, and I'll need to do that twice. This is such pretty fabric. And then I just cut around here. I can't see my lines. There we go. And don't forget to snip out the dots. I think my fabric must have been a little bit warm from the iron because the lines are disappearing. <laughs> There's the dot. <laughs> it's gone again. <laughs> right, before you go again. There, got you. And now if it makes it easier, you can simply use that as a template for the second side. Like so. I've missed a little bit of the fleece there, but it's, it's going to be in the seam allowance, so I'm not worried about putting a little bit more fleece on there. I think we'll bear with it. But you could do that. So it's quite a quick bag. I had a message from somebody the other day saying, do I do any um, bags that a bride could use? And I think this is probably the smallest clutch bag that I do. Um, but depending on what, what she wants to carry in it. But I'm thinking maybe in satins. It would look so glamorous. Maybe sew some pearls onto it as well. A bit of decoration would look lovely. So that's that. That's the lining. That's the flap, so I'm going to iron that um, and I'll put some fleece on the back of one of those pieces. How are we doing? Oh, loads of time to make a bag. <laughs> Lost the iron there. <laughs> well, that irons nicely. Sometimes the more affordable fabric, shall we say, can tend to... Uh, Keep their creases a little too much. Right, so that's those. And just on the one side, if you're using different lining to the outer fabric, I always put um, the fusible fleece on the outer piece because that's the bit that you touch. So that's, that's what you feel. And fusible fleece, ours is a Velizaline H640. <laughs> um, Morning, Janet. Morning, Debbie. Loving the show. She's going back to work later on today. And oh gosh, I've scrolled. Oh, there's loads of you here. 165 of you. Welcome along. <laughs> oh, I know, Jenny. So things things do go wrong. Don't tend to go wrong at home. They just tend to go wrong here for some reason. I think it's because I'm talking and, and listening and sewing all at the same time and maybe I'm just not good at multitasking. So just cutting out the flap from the fleece and then I'll need to iron it to the very edge. Don't worry if it doesn't stick down because this is all going to be trapped within the seam anyway. So it'd be fine. So we'll get that done at the edge. Then we're going to put a clasp on this bit. So I think we might have some of these on the website, I'm not sure. Right. So if you haven't seen these before, let me just open this up and show you. 
I use a lot of magnetic snaps um, in bags because they're really easy and there's no sewing. So they come in two halves. You know, I was saying earlier on about um, the, the, the names for things like birthing the bag. They can't have birthing the bag. Um, I call these innies and outies, and I know they're supposed to be male and, male and female, but that conjures up images for me, so I'm not going to call them male and female. Um, but you've got a bit that sticks out and a bit that sticks in. The bit that sticks in is um, the magnetic bit, and the slimmer bit isn't, but they're joined together like so. So I normally put the slimmer bit on the flap of the bag and this bit on the base, and these are the backs. So to put it on, I'm just going to put this on the lining. I'd go at least an inch from the edge because you're going to have a quarter of an inch seam allowance here and you're going to find it quite difficult to sew around something that's like that. So at least an inch away from, I think I put an inch in the book. So I'm going to fold this in half so that I can find the centre. And then take the back of the clasp and put the hole over the position where you want the, the snap to be. Mark each side. And then either with a quick and pick or a very sharp pair of scissors, we're going to snip into the holes. If your fabric's quite fine, then put in little, another little patch on the back to strengthen it. Don't make the holes too big. If you have small holes, you can always make them bigger. If you have big holes, you have big holes. Back goes on the legs and squish them outwards. Okay, we'll put the, the second half on in just a second. So then we're going to sew these two pieces right sides together, leaving the top open. This is going to be such a nice bag. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to put some applique on there, aren't I? My granddaughter wants hearts. I've got to put a heart on there. So I don't need you. Um, so let's take my fabric and my template. Find a little bit in the corner somewhere so I'm not wasting too much. And I'm going to have those, oh, and the little bird, the flower and the bird right in the centre. So I'm, I'm fussy cutting it. Right. Been busy for the book, thank you. Right. And of course you can, you can use that heart template for anything then, can't you? Let's cut that out before it disappears. There we go. And with it, I'm just going to leave the edges raw. And I'm just going to use a, um, a straight stitch to sew it on. I'd normally get the um, free motion embroidery foot on and do a little bit of, of free motion sewing, but I shan't. I thought we might have 505 knocking about, but we haven't. So not to worry, that's going to go right on the front there like that. that that'd be nice. And then I'm just going to stitch around the edge. Then we'll start sewing together. Oh, there's a spaghetti junction down here. Right. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. So just a little running stitch, and I'm just sewing a little running stitch. Not a big one. Um, about an eighth of an inch from the edge and because I haven't used any bonder web or heat and bond or anything um, it will fray a little bit around the edge and I like that look so I'm using a small stitch so that it doesn't fray too much so I'm just on a 2.2 a .2 with this one stop with a needle down if you need to pivot down into the point oops stop with a needle down she says and then doesn't and around the corner and back down and just a little reverse stitch there. There we go. Pretty. And then we'll sew these two pieces right sides together. Now if you do find that you have gone a little bit too close to the edge with your snap, then um, put your zipper foot on the machine, you'll be able to get the needle even closer there. So quarter of an inch seam allowance. And take it gently around the curves so that you've got nice new curves there. When you get to the, that bit, if you do a stitch straight across and then carry on sewing, you'll find that the points are a little bit more pointy 
don't know how that works, but it does. So just around the curve here, back into that one, one stitch, and then back around again. And then I'll just check that I've got both layers together. Because sometimes your fabric can shift a little bit as you sew. Think, I think we've got it. I think we've got it all. Yeah, okay. So then I'm going to snip into these points to make it easier to turn. Not worried about cutting around the curves. You could trim up with pink and shears if you wanted to. And then let's push this out. And then I'm just going to top stitch around the edge. So I can lengthen the stitch a little bit now. So if you're not too confident in top stitching, try using your, if you've got a quarter of an inch foot with a guide on it, that'll help you. Um, some um, blind hem feet are adjustable. And you'll be able to use the guide on that as well and just line that up with the edge of the fabric as you're sewing. So, just finish off around here. And I think that the top stitching just gives it a little bit more of a professional finish, but it also helps to hold the layers together so it keeps it nice and flat. Right. Oh, half the stock of the books is gone. Now I'm going to put the darts in. So just fold right sides together and sew again with a quarter inch seam allowance. Little tip for you, if you very gently curve the point, only very gently, then you won't get such a, a point from the darts. So just curve it around a little bit. Like so I'm not tying off the darts in this. This will be here all day. So you do this on both of the outer pieces and on the lining. That one. Love to see some pictures of the bugs you've been making if you've uh, if you've got any handy. Same on the linings, and then we'll start to construct the whole thing. You could add straps. Um, this is big enough that you could put a zip pocket on the inside if you wanted to as well. Sarah mentioned earlier on about making bags with the um, foam stabiliser. You could do that. That would make a nice sturdy bag. Or just use um, a firm interfacing instead of the H640. Sometimes I find it's difficult to, um, to turn the right side out when, you're, when you use stiff interfacing, but it's worth it. Right, so that's all four pieces. So now we're going to put the flap on. So that's going to go facing down. Remember, all the instructions for these are in the book. That goes face down over the top, like that. Make sure it's in the middle. And I'm just going to put a tacking stitch across the top there. So within the seam allowance, really close to the edge. And that can be a longer stitch. It's not coming out, but it's just holding it together. Now, this is where a walking foot would come in handy because I've got lots of layers and the top fabric wants to move a little bit more than the bottom, so I'm just kind of easing it in there, trying not to make any gathers. Got a little pinch there. Never mind, that's underneath the flap. I don't care. Then we're going to sew the two sides, right sides together of the outer bag. So that goes all the way around, and if you can match up the darts, that gives it a nice finish. They should match up. So again, quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'll just sew all the way around. When you come to the darts, I don't press them open or anything, but I'll squish them in opposite directions to cut down on the bulk a little bit. So again, just round the curves. Just take it easy round the curves because we want the curves to be curvy. Over that dart and back down. There we go. So 
And then we can turn this the right side out. And Oh, I didn't put the other clasp on, did I? Need to put the other half of the magnetic clasp on, so I'll do that now. So let's fold this over and mark where I want the other side to go. Straight. Yes, it is. So that can go there. Um, if you've got if you've got the book in the basket, can you check out? Because it looks like it might go, and I don't want you to miss out. So snip and snip and push this in. It's exactly the same styling bag. If you made this in um, maybe a metallic metallic faux leather would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, it could be your um, New Year's Eve party bag. Oh. Kate says I'm making it look so easy. It's because it is. So I'm going to sew the two lining pieces right sides together. This time I'll need a gap in the bottom so I can turn it the right side out. So we've got 10 minutes left. Better, better hurry up a bit. So again, squish the darks in opposite directions. I'll just reverse there, jump across, that's the gap. Reverse back again, squish those opposite ways. And, and so. And then, just like Sarah did with her bag earlier, we have the outside of the bag, the right side out, and the inside, inside out, and we're going to drop the outside of the bag inside the lining back side, right sides together. So that goes in there. Match the seams at the side. So the, the lining's inside out. This is the right side out. So right sides of the bag are together. So you can pin or clip that if you like. Make sure the flap's out of the way. And we're going to sew all the way around the top. Again, you can put maybe a little wristlet or a fine strap. Oh, tell you what would be nice, a couple of small D-rings. Then you can hook a strap on there if you wanted to. Shoulder strap, chain strap would be a bit posh. There we go. Almost done. I shan't top stitch around the bag, but I'll show you how I was going to do that. Back over the flap. And is that where I started? Yep. And then we'll turn it the right side out and see how we're looking. Hopefully got an excited granddaughter. She's going to get a bag. Oh, Dawn, thank you very much. Whoever's on cameras. <laughs> the one up here is a robot. And the two here are completely unmanned. So Paul Director is responsible for those who has to keep... <laughs> yeah, clicking from one to the other, but then racing out every now and again just to move things around. It's very clever what we do. Um, okay, so um, I'll finish that now. I'll need to sew the hole up in the bottom. I'll need to top stitch around there to give it a professional look. Give it a blast of steam because it's a bit, a bit wrinkly. And that fastens over there. And then you've got a nice little clutch bag. We're down to single figures of the book now. Oh, thank you. Can't wait, can't wait to see what you think about it. It's ever so easy to use. So 15, I've come up with 15 different styles of bags just using those two templates. When you're finished with them, they wipe clean, they pop back in here and that keeps you nice and organised. Oh, another little feature that I was rather pleased with, it's got an elastic fastening that goes around here, but you can use that as a bookmark to keep the page of the project that you want as well. So really simple to exp uh, ex simply explained. If you're new to sewing, I can't think of an easier way. There's nothing to enlarge. There's no patterns to cut out. There's no pinning involved. You literally plonk your pattern on top of your fabric and cut them out. So that's that's going to sell out. Thank you so much for, for ordering that. Um, I used the Osnaberg Early Bird. <laughs> 
which is this. <laughs> you, yours won't have the holes in, I have to say. I'm just going to neaten that up. Oh, hopefully that would... Don't let this one go back to the warehouse, will you? You will have a pound saving. That you count, count the pounds. Um, <laughs> not because I've been cutting bits off. Um, it's £6.50 and you get a metre and a half there. Jenny says she uses this all the time um, on Facebook and it's, it's really useful. I like that organic kind of feeling to it. It's just very natural, it's unbleached, it's very soft, it's a nice tight weave, but it does have flex in it and those are actually flex of the cotton pods. Oh, Penumbra's my dress, thank you. I actually bought it for Halloween last year. I was doing a Halloween thing on t telly and I thought it looked Halloween-y. Um, oh, thanks. Dawn says, thanks, Deborah. Got my Sunday name. Um, right, the tilde that I used here is half a metre. You can, you can buy this by the half metre, so if you want to buy metres and metres of it, then you can do. Um, and it's 112 wide and it's only £5.99. Glennis has just bought it, thank you very much. What size craft mat is that, says Hayes. This one is an extra large, it's 35 inches by 22 and it is metric on one side and imperial on the other. Um, right. H640, you, you'll have a square metre, there is actually, oh that's the cutting mat there look, is it? Oh yeah, there you go, one, I, I, I was thrown when it said one piece. <laughs> one piece of cutting mat, but it's a big one piece of cutting mat, uh, for £37.99, that is a really good price. H640, you'll have a metre square, so you've got the knobbly bits on one side, that goes on the wrong side of your fabric, iron it on, give it a blast of steam, um, as hot as your fabric can take it, and, um, and it sticks. And that's just £9.99, you'll be able to do a lot with a square metre. Um, oh, thank you, Dawn. Um, <laughs> Dawn says, well done, little Paul. Dawn says, well done. Oh, we said thank you. I said thank you. You got, you got a knock, Dawn. Susan, a proper demonstration. Oh, thank you. Uh, Neve says she's bought the book. She's very excited. Thank you. Um, many thought, oh, thanks. Jay. Oh, look, there are loads of you coming on there. Brilliant demo. First visit to Sewing Street. Welcome along, Diane. We've got 149 of you there now. Oh, busy, busy this morning. Right. Let me show you these, because you've been looking at these earlier on. And these are right over here. These are little purse kits. Now Delphine actually demoed these on the 20th of August. So if you go back to our YouTube channel, um, so go into YouTube, put Sewing Street into the search bar at the top, then when you see all of the different channels come up, it'll be the one with the circle. Click on that, go to videos, and then it, everything will be in date order. Um, and you'll be able to see her demoing these little purses. So the gluing frames. I like the handles on there as well. I do like I do like purse frames that you can put a strap on so you don't just have to hold them all the time if you didn't want to. Um, you've got all of your instructions here and there's a pattern as well. Those are your fat quarters. So you're getting the tilde and you've got some spot and leaves there as well. And then of course your frame as well. Um, frames as well. So all of that for £27.99. So nice clear instructions and you've got full size patterns in there as well for each one of the bags. Now as these are glue in, the best glue I've ever used for fabric and certainly for putting um, bags into frames because you don't want them to come out again is you go to an HT2. I get through so much of this. I will use it not just for bag making because it's, it's the best one I've ever used. Um, I'll use it to, for instance, if you wanted to glue those um, yo-yos on the bag from the previous hour, this is the glue that I'd use because I don't want it to come off. If I'm making rag dolls and I'm putting rag doll wigs on them, I'll put some of this underneath the stitches then sew it on as well. If I'm using buttons as decoration, 
decorations or if it's eyes on toys I'll sew them on and then lift up the button put a bit of this glue on as well if I'm putting trimming on uh, if I'm doing a bit of upholstery and I maybe covered a footstool or a chair and I want to put some trimming around the staples then this is the glue that I would use always put the lid back on straight away because the only downside is it's running um, and it tends to just carry on running even when you're not using it so do be aware of that and with the bag frames what, what I do is to do a quarter at a time so you drizzle the glue it's got quite a fine nozzle drizzle the glue inside the frame and leave it until it's a little bit tacky so leave it for about 30 seconds or so till it starts to dry then it's not runny then you put your fabric in then you put some fabric clips on it and leave it to dry and then carry on with the second half and then do the same on the other side of the um, of the, of the thing and then you're not maneuvering fabric around it'll grip and then you're free to carry on doing the other side that's how I find it easier anyway and it lasts a long time that glue never thought to be so passionate about a tube of glue but I am I, I love it it really is it, I, I think it's the best I've ever used and, and I think I've only got one left I need to get some more of that um, oh Louise made a grace bag and so do you sell the large white ironing pad we have done. I'm not sure if it's in stock at the moment. But Hannah's checking. Hannah's checking as we talk. Right, are we going through this, the rest of this fabric? I'll give you a reminder of the angels. But some of these are becoming limited stock. So this is the angels on grey, which is TJZW65. Buy the half meter again. So if you wanted a meter, order two units and it'll come to you in one piece. I just think they're really different. They're very kind of, um, I don't know, 1940s inspired, I think, that, that kind of look. The hair and the, and the blusher, or rouge, as they used to call it, didn't they? They're very glamorous angels, I have to say. But there's lots of detail on there as well, so in the wings or, or different prints. So that's the grey. This one is this mauve FT, FPZW29. But even though it's a novelty, it's a very elegant novelty, isn't it? And again, that's £5.99. And then there's the blush. Those two go nicely together, actually. And that's that one. Very soft, delicate colours, aren't they? Really pretty. Again at £5.99. And finally, what were we calling this one? I can't remember. Sand, that was it. And I knew it was a colour that it isn't, if that makes sense. I wouldn't call this sand. I would call it pale grey or taupe, personally. I've not seen sand that colour. Um, Five ninety nine again, and that's um, angel scraps, scraps in angels, tilda angels, scraps in angels. Oh, sand fabric uh, again for five pounds ninety nine. So all of the other tilda fabric that we have lots of and not had chance to go through in the show, have a look on sewingstreet.com. Everything is there right underneath the video that you'll see of what's happening live. Right, we've got Sarah coming up again in the next hour. We're going to be tumbling blocks and. Tumbling blocks and Y seaming and um, doing a bit of patchwork and maybe a bit of hand quilting as well. That's in the next hour. So do stay with us. We'll see you again in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. 
And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Shh, don't tell anyone, but I'll be on Sewing Street soon. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool, and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil, and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection, and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with quilters, and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hello again and welcome back. Now Sarah's going to be back again in the show as well. We're going to be doing those, uh, those why seams. Why? Why seams? Um, and we've got some gorgeous fabrics for you to use as well. We've actually bundled these together with a £10 savings. So let me give you the details. Um, the book that Sarah's going to be working from is The Joy of Jelly Roll Quilts. Um, do you want to have a look at that first actually? So have a look at some of these projects. What a big book. It's a thick, for nine, hang on a minute, 9.99? Well, it says 12, oh, Carolyn, I'm sorry. Oh, funny story. Um, this is Carolyn Forster. Um, she lives in Tunbridge Wells. I was over in um, at the quilt market in Houston last year um, and I was on the, the search press stand and they had um, pictures of, of three authors. So there was myself, there was Sarah and there was Carolyn. But mine and Sarah's pictures are kind of like this, and Caroline's was just a head. <laughs> it's huge head. And <laughs> some people came over and said, oh, what's that? And I said, oh, that's you, isn't it? Oh, and who's, who's that in the middle? I said, that's Caroline. Her, her head is actually that big. 
Have you seen the new Alice in Wonderland one with Helena Bonham Carter as the, as the queen? And she had a huge head. So, so I was telling everybody that Carolyn had this huge head. And it's funny when she came on the stand, she had. No, sorry, Karen. No, she, has, she hasn't got a huge head. <laughs> it just looked really weird. Anyhow, Carolyn is an expert quilter. She's written several books on the subject. <laughs> See, this is why I'm doing a podcast. You're going to be going to be amazed what's going to come out. <laughs> I've got I've got a, a long history of working in TV. <laughs> I was at 42 years to be exact. I've met a lot of divas. <laughs> oh, I'm so going to spill the beans. So, um, look at the. Oh, <laughs> we've got lots of different projects, all using jelly rolls. So, using small pieces of fabric. So, a great way, I mean, you buy jelly rolls, absolutely fine. Um, but you don't have to have the jelly rolls, you can use your own strips of fabric. So if you've got smaller pieces and you don't know what to do with them, now Carolyn's got some um, some really lovely ideas. And it, you know, even just a plique, something that you've already got, decorating a tablecloth that you may have already. Little needle notebooks, those are really useful. Or a zip pouch, that's something that you can keep your tissues and your hand sanitizer in. Um, a tiny little bag. This is a, it is a teeny tiny one, that one. I've got a doorstop, Japanese bag. Little key fobs. There's an awful lot in here, isn't there? And then there are larger quilts um, as well. Oh, now this is the one that um, Sarah's been made. I, do, I love tumbling blocks. I love that effect. I think it's so clever. Um, but this is tumbling blocks as well, but put together. Oh, gosh, that's really strange. I've just looked at the, we've got a monitor in front so, so we can do our hair and stuff. Um, and as I'm looking at it on the screen, I'm seeing a tumbling block. And when I look at it here, I see a star. It's clever, isn't it? It's quite a, an optical illusion. So Sarah's actually stitched around the star shape, which is here. But then I can see one, two, three blocks. Clever, isn't it? Oh. So again, um, we've got different sets again just using small pieces so they're, they're great beginner projects as well how many have we got 24 oh gosh so 24 40 44 54 64 68 projects in total for 9.99 gosh even if you paid a pound a project that'd be 68 pounds good value isn't it so that's the joy of jelly rolls by carolyn forster with a huge head um, and then these are the fabrics that we put together for you. So you can order these separately, but if you go for all three, you're making a saving. This is huge. So this is Christmas, and that's just one side. It's actually twice the size because we've got this on the other side. There are loads, so two and a half inch wide strips, which you cut up, but you don't have to. You can use them all together as one piece of fabric if you like. But really detailed. Look how tiny some of these, um, like, uh, biscuits. The biscuits. It's upside down, isn't it? Sorry. Gingerbread houses, gingerbread man. They look like biscuits to me. And remember, that's just half. We've got the same in all of these different colours on the other side. Exclusive to Sewing Street. And designed and printed in the UK. So that's £19.99 for this huge panel, really is. Then we have Ditsy Bitsy, which is this one. This is a quarter of what you're actually getting because it's still folded up, look, but it's huge. So two and a half inch strips again with florals, with spots, and really pretty colours on that one. If you wanted to go for that on its own, it's £19.99. And then, finally, we have the misty blue, which this little quilt's been made out of here. And I'm going to show you exactly what you're getting. Are you ready? There you go. I hope you've got a widescreen TV. 
These are massive. It's 140 centimeters by six pounds um, 35. And for design rolls, they can, they're so expensive, can't they? Just for strips of fabric. But I like the idea of having Having a sheet of fabric that you can just use as a sheet of fabric. So you could make a bag out of that, just as it is. You don't have to cut them all up into strips. Um, and I like to have that, that kind of versatility. All on 100% cotton. Now, if you do a lot of, maybe do the, the, the jelly roll races and that kind of thing. So if you use a lot of jelly rolls or you just fancy saving yourself £10, why don't you go for all three together? Because that would be just under £60, wouldn't it? £59.97 if you go for all three, but this is £49.97 if you go for all three. Don't have to use them all together. Maybe just put one to one side and use that later on. Well, actually, they do actually, 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 we were talking about this earlier on with Sarah. Um, words that you say all the time and don't even realise that you're doing it. And I said, mine's normally really, really. So I'll try to stop doing that now. But I said, you know, a lot of people say actually, and here I am, actually. So actually, they kind of go together quite well as well. Yeah. Uh, £49.97 for all of those. That's a lot of fabric, isn't it? But I, I do like a bargain. That's what you're going to get. Um, so the tumbling blocks here, this is the misty blues. Pretty, aren't they? Can you see stars in that one? Yes. If you look where all of the diamonds come together in the centre, oh, it sends your eyes funny, doesn't it? You can just about make out stars and then they're kind of morphing, there you go, morphing back into, into blocks again. What a clever design. Oh. Um, all of the instructions that you need to make up this little quilt are in the book, in the Joy of Jelly Rolls, so you, you will need that. We haven't bundled it together because no lot of you got, got the book already, so, or you might just want the fabrics on their own anyway. Um, should, we, should we do a bit of sewing? Should we, should we do that? All right then, well we'll take a couple of minutes so that we can swap over and sanitise everything and, and all of that kind of malarkey, and we'll see you again back here with Sarah in a second. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. We, we've, uh, we're going to say hello to Brenda, who's in Louisville in Kentucky. Hello over there. Um, and another Brenda, I don't think she's in... Oh, so, oh, yes, it is Brenda in Kentucky. We're saying that these strips would be nice for Borgello. Oh, they would. Very That'd much. That would be a nice idea, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Yeah, so, lovely. Um, I want to get straight in and get started with these. I, I, I just, I've said a few times, I love tumbling blocks. I think it's such a clever... Well. Strangely I enough, do. it was the first time I've, most of the projects I do on Stone Street, it's the first time I've done them. <laughs> so, is it? Yeah, so it's good for hopefully new viewers or new sewers who can look and think, oh, it is achievable. So I'd heard lots of things about the why scene. <laughs> <laughs> I think the good thing when you're quite new to something is, you've probably not got that same level of affair because most of the techniques I do are quite new to me. So I thought, yeah. well, you know, give it a go. So, uh, but yeah, it's a really nice um, technique to learn. And actually the book is as well, as well as having all the um, 64, was it 68 projects, it's also got quite a lot of techniques in as well, which yeah. I thought was quite good. 
and in the instructions it refers you back to different pages and things so that you can follow those along so definitely a good book for a beginner and like you said Debbie if you're not into jelly rolls or you don't think you're into jelly rolls you can still use it with fat quarters and just cut them up because yeah. a lot of them are small projects like this one and I think that's quite nice because if you're learning a new technique you maybe don't want to make a, a king size quilt do you but something like this is achievable and then you've still got something really pretty to, at the end and you've you know learned some new skills and, and tell everyone what your husband said when he'd made it he said is that it <laughs> 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 used to seeing you with big yes. quilts because <laughs> normally I was like he'll say what are you making I'll say well lap quilt and then I'll get this massive quilt out and he'll go oh, that's a big lap quilt but like he went this really is like a lap quilt yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah so it is quite nice and I noticed there's a mixture in here of big quilts and sort of like 18 20 inch squares so yeah. quite nice to do and practice some hand stitching which we may get a chance to have a go at later as well and again if that was um if that was a king size I wouldn't I wouldn't fancy I hands quilting that. But Some that people do, don't they? And I must oh, admit, I, I was, yeah, I quite enjoyed it once I got going. But yeah, that was definitely a nice size. And I was thinking like your granddaughter, doesn't that make a lovely little, um, yes. for the cribs, you know, dollies, thinking yes. back to the days when, because um, I was thinking, well, what would you do with it? But it'd be nice just to have it as a wall hanging or. Yeah, maybe bedside table. Yes. Um, just yeah. a, little, a little table. Mark. Or even putting a back on it and then you could quickly turn that into. Um, a nice uh, cushion cover or something. Oh, you? that'd be nice. Mm. But yeah, it is quite mesmerising when you look at the, because you see either see the star or you see the, the block, don't you? Yeah. And actually, just before I get cutting, I just what I did with the sh the, um, the the sheet or the panel. This is the leftover, so I've tried oh, to it? roll it as a, a jelly roll wood ish oh. or a design roll wood. So you see, there's definitely enough there to make another one or do another project. So. You get a lot mm -hmm. of fabric on your panel. Okay, so let's begin. So what I recommend doing with the panel as well is cutting it down before you cut it into the strips. So I've had panels before, particularly the jelly roll, uh, sorry not the jelly roll, one, the um, rainbow one, and they have they tend to have like the white stripes. Yes which is great for, you know, if you're cutting and then you can sort of firm up and get a bit nearer, can't you? But these all merge into one. So you just need to remember when you're cutting that if you do go into the next one a little bit, then that's within your measurement, as it yeah. were. Whereas normally you'd cut when you and you'd think, oh, I've got a bit of white there, I'll just trim that down. Yeah. So, but if you just bear that in mind, hence the reason why I've pinned today, just so that it speeds it up. So just take a little bit of time to just double check roughly. I mean, you've got a little bit of allowance because you've got a quarter of an inch. So if you do end up, which I, I did quite a few times, cutting into, you know, the neighbouring one, it doesn't matter because so long as it's no more than a quarter of an inch, you won't see that anyway. Okay. So I shall get my stripology for this. But yeah, I mean, I've cut it in half. I mean, to be fair, you could cut it into quarters even just to make it... if you, easier or if you're confident with cutting it as one big sheet then you know that's fine too so bear with me so if you've got one of these these are great so oh, we've got them on the website haven't we the yeah stripologies i'm sure for accuracy my lined up there so i'll just do a quick i'll take my pins out now i've traveled but i just love the way and the way these are designed is because to get the effect, you need to have dark, medium and light so that you've got the illusion of the, of the cube. Yes. And these are, have been perfectly, um, obviously, designed for that in mind. I, that's key, isn't it? Mm. You're not going to get the cube effect unless you've certainly got one, one fabric that's very much darker than the other two. Yeah. In fact, the first time I did it, I wasn't really paying attention and I made a couple that had the dark on the other side and then I quickly realised that that wasn't going to work. I mean, it's not the end of the world. You just get a slightly different effect, yeah. don't you? But um, So we've sort of lined up and then we'll just go in. Just go back down because it's just a little bit off there, but more or less. Caroline says she made a small quilt like this a while ago and her youngest daughter uses it for a doll's and a doll's boogie. Yeah, just looking at it there, it just yeah. took me back to the days when, you know, I don't know if they do nowadays, but you know, little girls have cribs and you want to have the oh, full. Oh, they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So even this, nothing's wasted because I you know, keep that and you can use that in because it's such lovely quality fabric. It's nice, isn't it? That um, you can use that. And then we'll just go back in. Technically, I could have left that on actually, couldn't I? But How old are your kids then? Uh, eldest is 21 oh. and the youngest is 18 now. So, yeah. Boys or girls? Girls. Two girls. Are, mm. they, are they crafty? Um, my eldest has just started dabbling doing some candle making, strangely. Oh, I've never done that before. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely when she gets going because uh, I've got a bit here that I miss. Yeah, the, the, the smells are beautiful. Yeah. Um, and oh, I'd love to have a go at that. But yeah, they don't like sewing. I mean, I keep trying to force it upon them <laughs> and they're like, oh no, mum, that's your hobby. But, um, but yeah, they do sort of like to have a little play now and again. Or they'll come into my craft room. And uh, I'll, I'll just say, don't touch the scissors, whatever you do, <laughs> don't touch the scissors. But basically, you just keep going and you'll cut your strips like we have there. Okay. So for speed, because you don't want to watch me cutting strips of fabric, I will use the ones that I've already started. So what we'll do is, as I say, the good thing about this project is, it, you don't need, quite often when you're working with, with strips, you need like the full width of fabric and things, don't you? But with this, you don't. It tells you to just cut 30 light, medium and dark, um, two and a half inch strips. And I think it says about four and a half inches. So see, I kept them on the strip yeah. and then that makes it a little bit easier. So we will quickly just try and sort them into light, medium and dark. So you can have it however you like, but sort of something like this works and this is obviously just if you're wanting to that's probably on there isn't it if you wanted to create the illusion of the cube for the stars you can see I did all light and and then that created where the points came in so there we go I've got a few to get us going so for the cutting of the diamonds themselves obviously there's quite a few different ways you can do this Today I'm going to use my Creative Grids ruler and the 60 degree angle, which I've marked on. And this is a, a top tip to do because no matter how many times you do it, you'll look down really quick and you, it's quite easy to lose your mark, isn't it? Yes, so I've not such a good idea. Not just done this for TV, I, I do this at home and I've just used a bit of washi tape on here to, uh, to make my, both my markings. So I do recommend doing that. So let's go with well, let's go with spots to start off with. Um, just to let you know quickly, a, a third of the stock of the the bundle of three are sold out mm -hmm. now. Uh, oh, I mean, it's just such lovely. All the panels are. It's just sort of lovely fabric to work yep. with as well, isn't it? So you have your your length. So yours could be a full length, or you know you'll have it have it in front of you, lying straight across your mat, and then put your ruler up so that the sixty degree line is on the bottom of your strip so hopefully you can see that and then we're going to cut up there to get the angle okay and then we'll flip it over and now we're going to work from the cut angle over here so oh, back to the ruler because we want to make these two and a half inch diamonds I've marked from the edge up to two and a half inch there so you can see and I've sort of put the tape just the other side because I'm still going to work off the line on the ruler, but just put the tape just the other side of it. So now this will be my cut line. And we have our diamond. Now in the book, it tells you to you can use this method or you could also use a template, which they do have in the book. Right. I tried using the templates, but... I thought this was more accurate. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? definitely. And I'm assuming you can cut through lots of layers at the same time as well. You wouldn't do yes. it just one at a time. Yeah, that, like absolutely. That. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, you can certainly stack them up. And in the book, it says do like 30 of each. Or what I ended up doing, because I, I seem to be a bit of a cut as you go person. I've noticed this. <laughs> so I, I had mine all laid out like I have here. And then as I was doing it, I was thinking, oh, that one next, I think I'll use that and that. So I tended to cut as a go, but you could absolutely cut them all up as well. So that's that one. So we'll go with, so that's our dark. So for our light, and now see, once you've made the cut, you can just go straight back in and it speeds it up. But yeah. just to show, I'll just do a couple. So I'll go from the other end, but obviously you wouldn't do that. So 
cut again on the 60 degree. And I noticed, I think it was yesterday, um, Vix was showing how you can cut 60 degrees with the Creative Grid Stripology. Oh, okay. But my Stripology is a little, it's an older one. It doesn't have the 60 degree on it. So I thought today I'll keep it simple and go with this method. But, you know, you'll do whatever works best for you. And then we'll just have one light. Again, we'll go off the end. And I think just enjoy the process of cutting because sometimes we get a bit rushed, don't we? And just sort of be methodical with it, flip it over. But definitely have your markings on because it's going off the board, aren't I? It's quite easy once you get going. I did a few before and I was cutting them at two and a quarter because, you know, when you. Yeah. They, they all merge into one, don't they? I, I, I think that's one of the, the best top tips. I've, I've heard actually, and one of the most simple as well, but I've never seen anybody do that before. It's such a good idea. I suppose that's the craft room here because I've always got a bit of washi tape lying around. Yeah. I mean, you could use any um, salad tape or your quilters tape. So you have your diamonds. Now to create this effect, we always, we're always looking for the light to be at the top. And on the left hand side, we'll have the dark and then the medium like so. And we'll just keep coming back to this because, again, it's so easy to pick it up wrong and sew yeah. it wrong. And so I've done that quite a few times as well. But before we do any of that, a top tip is to mark it, which I shall do, to get the quarter inch line. And I'm going to use a pencil because I did experiment a little bit and I used, I do like the friction pen. But obviously when you use a friction pen, when you press, you lose your line. And yes. when you come to sew them all together in a row, it helps to still have your lines. So I was ended up having to draw them back in again. I thought, oh, this is daft. So I just used a pencil. And the back of the fabric is nice and white, so it lends itself to being marked. So literally, I'm just lining that up. You can see there on the quarter inch and just going edge to edge. And also, I think doing this method, you're going to be bang on with your point, whereas if you're trying to just measure your quarter inch, you could be a little bit off, couldn't you, if you've... Yeah. And the other good thing is, you get a sewing line, and who doesn't love a sewing line? Yeah. <laughs> and it's a good way to test your quarter inch foot, isn't it, on your machine to see how accurate you are. That's true. So you're going to go do that with all of them. So again, this might be something that you've cut your diamonds out, and perhaps you're going to sit in front of the TV and mark them out or something. Um, but it's worth taking the time do that it's all in the preparation isn't it it's all part of it isn't it you, you hear quite a lot of uh, um, easy ways to cut and easy ways to mark and get it out of the way because the fun bits the sewing I think this the prep's all part of it yeah you know, take your time cutting things out you're going to get a better result if you do yeah definitely and here we go and I did use, um, so I say I tried the friction pen and then obviously the lines disappeared. And then I tried one of the um, washable pens. But I found on my lighter colours that bled through a little bit and I, I didn't yeah. like that look. So, you know, sometimes you just got to go back to using the basics, haven't you? So, back to placing it how we want it to be, which is like so. So the first thing we're going to sew is the medium colour to the dark colour. So we'll flip that over and while we're on the close-up I'll just show... We're going to sew from the intersection or your cross point here to there. And we'll start with a locking stitch, end with a locking stitch. I tended to do a locking stitch because sometimes if you do the reverse, you can shoot it a bit, can't you? But it helps to do a bit of a locking stitch because of the nature of the Y seam. So right sides together. And we on the quarter inch, I think we are. Well, we'll soon find out, won't we? <laughs> Actually, I'll quickly put the quarter inch foot back on if I may. I'm hoping that when we move studio, you won't be standing up sewing. Can't, can't get oh. used to standing up sewing. I know, I mean, it's, it's when you come to do things like changing feet, isn't it, and threading up, yeah. that you realise you're at the wrong angle, totally. That's it. But yeah, new studio. That's a sushi bar that I'm looking forward to. 
I don't even like sushi. We've been talking about this since about March. I know, I'm sure funny. it's not really going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so off we go. So I'll just do a little locking stitch. We're having a riding school as well. Oh, yeah. I thought that'd be quite nice. I think my helipad's finished. Very good. <laughs> Actually, I'll put a request in them for some accommodation, you know, for, so we don't have to travel. <laughs> I, I think we've got a five star plus hotel going oh, up next to it that's uh, that Zone Street own. So that, yeah, perfect. Be... Free of charge, of course. <laughs> yeah. So we've sewn there. In fact, I have shot over after I said don't shoot over, but anyway, that'll be fine. So we'll give that a press. And I'll let you see. So pressing is key here as well. Um, Brenda's saying, will this be recorded? While she was typing an order, she missed the cutting part. Oh. Um, it's going to be on Facebook forevermore. Yeah. It's not going to be taken down. And it will be on YouTube as well. So probably in a couple of hours time, Brenda, it'll be upon our YouTube channel. And if I get a chance, I'll do another quick cut because if this one works out, I'll do another one to prove it wasn't a fluke. And if this doesn't work out, I'll do another one <laughs> <laughs> to see if I can improve. <laughs> so there we are. We've just pressed those open. Okay. I'll that back there. And there we go. So now we're going to sew the, the uh, lighter colour. So I tend to go on top of the dark, first of all. I don't know if that's a, a thing. Well, could you explain to Julie what a locking stitch is? Yes, it's just the, um, it's usually the, like a bullseye button on your machine. And it, on mine anyway, and I think on here, it tends to go one back, one forward, up and down. So it sort of secures your stitch. Um, I know a lot of people like reverse, don't they? But Yeah, I think that's because not all machines have it. Mm. I, I think that if you're using a decorative stitch, it's really nice because if you're reversing on a decorative stitch, yeah. you, you reverse over the stitch. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it's just handy for this one. So, yeah. so instead of going backwards, you've got on top of itself, basically. Yeah. Haven't you? And with some machines, I know you can actually program, probably with some of the fancy ones, you can program it, can't you? So when you finish, yes. it does it automatically. It does work, yeah. So that's good. But anyway, so the light goes on top of the dark, like so. And we're going to sew, I can show you, along this line here that I'm going to pull, push back the seam because this is like a key part. We don't want to catch any of this seam here. So another thing that I do, which I found helped, was I tend to put like a clip on the end here just to hold this in place. So that's going nowhere now. That's a good idea. And then I can just focus on here. And I don't know how... I know Paul can get in pretty close, can't he? You can just check that if you fold that back, say. Could you just move it over this way very slightly? So we, to you. Yeah, yeah, that's better. We can see better. So we're, we're coming in. We're coming in. So we can see there that they should, if I've been accurate with my cutting, match underneath. Folded that one out of the way. And also another check you can do is pop a pin through where you've done your little intersection here and just lift it up underneath and just see. So I can see I'm a little bit off there. So I'll do a little bit of a jiggle just to, because basically what we're wanting to do, that's much better there, is we're going to sew from exactly where I put that pin in, which is also where my cross is anyway, down to that cross there. And this seam allowance and this one, I just want to get that out of the way so I don't want to catch any of that. So I'll put it on the machine and I'll take the pin out at the last minute just to, says um th that bundle by the way um saving 10 pounds over half of the stock's gone there when we're only just over half of the way through the hours so could go at the end of the hour um jennifer sent a question hi jennifer um the christmas fabric panel she says how christmasy is the christmas fabric Ooh. and can it be used in other ways um you can buy this on its own this is what um, mm -hmm. Sarah's made to make this one. To be honest, now then, let's have a look. Yeah, it's Christmassy, mm, but, but it's subtle Christmas, yeah. isn't it? I think you could get away with sort of winter projects and things. Yeah. And so we've got, um, I'll, I'll turn it the right way round for you really quickly. Sorry, there we go. Um, so we've got, they are snowflakes. Um, that one's not Christmassy. These are biscuits. We've got gingerbread men, which, I mean, they're, they, they're not just for Christmas, they're for all year <laughs> round. We've got mistletoe, more snowflakes, snowflakes, 
hearts again, so that's not particularly Christmassy. And then it's just a repeat of all of those patterns in different colours. From a distance, you, you wouldn't automatically think that's Christmas, would no. you? No, no. So, yeah, and, it, you know, it's a huge sheet of fabric. You could mm. just use it and like you, you did on the back of here. Yeah, I did. Um, I hadn't planned to. That's why it's a little bit snug, because normally my back I would just do out of fabric, but yeah. I decided to quilt it because I, I used the to create a, the, the lines to create some quilting. Yeah, and it's uh, that's really effective. So it, it actually looks as though you have piece them all together mm, yeah but that's just using the solid solid piece of fabric so yeah yeah lots of ideas mm. for you okay so i've pressed that second seam open and just gone up to the point you can see where my finger is there with that so now we're going to flip it over and turn it round so that the dark i'm going to put my finger underneath like so and if you can see that's a good angle there that if i push those down there it's all symmetrical and lines up so it's just worth doing these little steps I mean once you've done a whole quilt you'll race ahead but it's nice just to check and then I'll turn it back round do like I did before push push those back so that I can check that I'm not basically I don't want to grab any of that because that's going to cause a bit of puckering or something and I'll pop my little clip in again just to keep these tails together I don't know why but that I just find that helps if I don't do it it um I don't know it just seems to work better and I'm going to pop the needle in again uh, sorry the pin in again just to so you can see I'm a bit off there that's it just to get where I'm going to start and just check that all your seam allowances and that dark one is out of the way so off we go to sew the last seam pop it on needle down so it's going to go hopefully exactly where that pin was that's it and off we go so that was the locking stitch happening and that's it again try and get it on that dot it helps to get make sure you do try and to go to the cross point because when we come to put them all together you'll well, you'll see why that's important. So now the moment of truth, but before we turn it over, she says, I'm going to sneak a little look. I'm going to sort of finger press, because if I just slam the iron down now, it's a technical term, slam the iron, <laughs> the iron will just crush the seams however it wants to. But I want to try and manipulate it. So excuse all these tails. And I'll work out. So I think, you know, I'm quite happy for them to sit like that, I think. that show up on the, that should be okay. So when you're happy with that, get your iron and give it all a good press. And there we go. So yeah, so you've got a nice bit there. And then here we go. Ta-da! Ta oh, a little bit of a compress that out. And what I do here is if I'm happy with it, I just give it a very light press of best press, which I don't know if you've got it in stock. If I'm not happy with it, I will blast it with best press and make sure that I press it into submission. Yeah. But have a look on the website if you, if you want your best price, it should be on there. But there's basically one. So if I do another one and then I can show you how we sew them together. Is that okay? okay? Yeah, we're okay for time still. And then I'll just cut one of them and then the lady that was asking about the cutting, she can see. Um, and then the others I'll use the corners. So we'll take, so we'll go with this one this time. So if I put them all there. And you just keep going and, and building lots of different um, designs. So we're back to the 60 degree line on our ruler, lining it up with the bottom of your fabric. Oops, and my eyes are going off. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's these checks actually. Tumbling, tumbling blocks and checks is bound to send yeah. your eyes a bit funny. Asking for trouble. So I've cut that angle there and then it's key to turn this to the other side because now this becomes where we're, the line that we're lining up to get our two and a half inch just like so and then we're going to cut here there we go and there you've got perfect diamond so let's go with let's have a light pink spotty so we well, that wasn't very cut very well was that well we won't use that one we'll 
go with this one. So because I've already got my angle from last time, all I need to do is line it up. Right. So yeah, I think you could definitely, I need a new blade in my, uh, I thought I'll bring my own rotary cutter and then forgot to put a fresh blade in it. Always helps having a new blade in, doesn't it? Oh, new blades and new needles in your sewing machines. That's, yeah. oh, it just makes such a difference. I love a, new, love a new blade. And I think we all get guilty of that, don't we? We think, oh, I can eke this out a little bit longer. But when you, then when you do change, you yeah. think, oh, why didn't I do that sooner? Yeah. So there we go. So I've got my light, I've got the dark and the medium. So, and then we'll just quickly do the markings again. So with the pencil, so handily you've got this quarter inch mark on, on here. And definitely, I think, especially if you're looking to master the Y seam like I was, this is a good way to start because if you're working with like a cotton lawn fabric or something, it won't be probably as easy to do your markings. And this sort of just behaves itself, this yeah. fabric. I don't, I don't know if that's yeah. a technical term, but it's just nice to work to. And when you press it, it stays where it, it needs to go. And I think anything that you can see your markings clearly on the back is always a bonus as well. I never thought about that actually, but you know, having the white back on the mm. fabric, but um, works, doesn't it? Yeah, because I'm, I almost find that if I'm doing dressmaking, I'll always pick, obviously you pick the fabric that you are drawn to, don't you? Yeah. And I always seem to pick ones that don't show they don't have a right or a wrong or and it's really hard to use a you know anything to mark them with but it's just little things like that that important so we'll pop it back to that's the look we're going for then with the dark there on that side on the left medium and then your lighter at the top okay. so again flip those over and we'll sew well, actually while we're on there i'll show again just for so it's point to point so it's always point, it's a bit like dot to dot really, I suppose, <laughs> isn't it? And back to the machine. But also within the book, I was noticing that there's quite a few projects that have, that use similar techniques. So I think there's a pin cushion. I just can't believe what a, a heavy book you get for £9.99. I know, £9 I know it's a... Uh, Oh, the quilting materials and all of the hints. I, I love things like that. Because um, there are things that you can use for other projects as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it tells you everything in there from how to, um, to quilt, to do your binding. Uh, there's even cutting instructions, actually. Yeah, that's another point. The lady that was asking about it, uh, beginning of the book, it shows you how to cut using rulers to achieve 60 degree mm. um, markings and it also tells you how to make templates and cut with templates so so then we're back here again so we'll lining up like so and flip that over and back to the machine I put my clip on to hold there sorry Paul, no, more with us this morning as usual oh. she's on call but she's with us at the moment. She says, loving the demo, very well explained. So she's going to give it a oh, go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I must admit, um, oh, the other thing is quite funny. When I was making um, them, I don't know if anybody else does this as well, but I have a pile of what I call like, this isn't going to pass quality control. So I push <laughs> those to one side, the ones I'm not happy with, and then the ones that I am happy with. So I started off and there was quite a few on the not happy pile. So I carried on. Anyway, after about three or four hours, I went back to the not happy pile and suddenly a lot of those pass the quality control check. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. We, yeah. You know, you get really critical, don't you, to start off with. And the other thing actually that I noted as well, even when I was making this one, there was at the time when I'd laid it all out, pressed it, there was two or three that I thought, oh, I'm really not happy with them. I wish I'd done, done them again. But I thought, no, I'm going to go with it now. And by the time I'd hand quilted it, I can't see them anymore because... Yeah. And I think that's a good tip for, for people because you do, you look at them on your desk or on your table, don't you? And if they're not as flat as a pancake and your seams aren't matching everywhere, we think, oh, that's no good. But once it's all in and you finish your project, yeah, it's beautiful. 
it, it's like if you're if you're getting a little bit frustrated by something, you don't think it's working, just step away from it. Yeah. Come back the next day, and you, you like you said, you probably will come back and just say, oh, "That's all right." Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. What was I thinking? Actually, yeah. I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's a perfectionist in us, I suppose, isn't it? Okay, so I'll take that pin out again now, and so, and it is like anything else. Like the more you do. Because like normally we probably don't, I mean, I think the only other time I had done a Y seam was when I'd done the, um, the hexi tool yeah. and uh, I had to do some Y seams on there and I probably only had to do two or three. But obviously now we've done more, you just improve your technique, don't you? Yeah. So pressing the seam open, I can open it. There's some really lovely little projects in here. A lavender stacks, point. pin cushions. You know, yeah. if, you, if you are a, a beginner quilter and you are finding quilts a little bit daunting, um, this, this is a perfect way to yeah. get going. Yeah, it's nice for, for pin cushions. So if you didn't want to do that, you could just take one of the hexes or sew two of them together, couldn't you, to make it? Yeah. Um, so we're lining up again our seams here. So it does get a bit repetitive, but it's an important part of the process. And again, I always stick the pin through just for my own peace of mind. So I know, I mean, you can feel as well, you can, Paul's getting really close now, but you can see all the layers. And so you want to be starting just after all the layers. So if you're starting on, on the bulk, that's when you can get a bit of a, um, a puckering. But it's not the end of the world. You can usually press that out, can't you? Or you could go in and with your seam ripper and just yeah. tease it open a little bit. So let's put my clip on. Then... Maura, Amanda wants to know what you do for a living because you're always on call. Sometimes she's not on call. Sometimes she's actually off and sits and does some sewing. And sometimes she's not here at all. <laughs> I'll leave that for you to answer. Yeah, I hope she's not had any call outs. So, oh, so many projects in here, from quilts to Russian dolls. It's, I've, I've, I've flipped through this book so many times, not just in the show today, and I keep seeing something new. So here we're going again on the last seam. Oh, sorry. Oops, okay. Um, so I'm just going to finger press again. Remember, like we said, where you can, you then are in charge of how the seams fall, rather than letting the iron just flatten it. So that should be okay. Are you happy with that? It is satisfying, isn't it? Yeah. You know, when you turn it over and you see those perfect points. Although, well, having said that, I've got a little bit of a, I've got best press on that one, a little bit of a tuck in there. I, just, I think a lot of it is the, the quarter inch as well. You need to make sure that you're, you're bang on with that. Yeah. So I think we can, that will pass quality control. So. <laughs> Oh dear. I love the way you have a quality control. Oh. Well, my, my other saying is, um, yeah. and I say this quite a lot, I always go, a blind man on a galloping horse wouldn't notice that. <laughs> I don't know, it's probably a Yorkshire saying. But, um, right, you so see a lot a of them, don't you? Blind, yes, blind men yes. on galloping horses. They just don't notice things that. So here you can see we've got the, shall I turn it for me, that way. So we've got the the lights here, we've got all the darks, the mediums, and literally that's how you, you make them in strips. So I'll show you how we sew a strip together. And it's exactly the same sort of technique, really. I'll just push that out of the way. And then. So again, we're looking for our dot the dots. So we're, we're starting, we're going to start up there. So I'll push the seam allowance out of the way and get my needle right in there. And I'll sew down to there. So Let's do that. And in fact, I've, I've never I've just think I've never done tumbling blocks on a on a sewing machine. It's I've always been English paper piece yeah. for me. I covered a footstool um, with three different colours of denim. Oh, I think I've seen that on YouTube. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's, it's lasted so long, took me yeah. ages, um, and it's quite thick denim. So um, I got through a couple of thimbles on that one. Oh yeah, I bet you did. Yeah, yeah. This is. I mean, I suppose it is quite nice to do. Just different techniques. If you if you're making it into a quilt, you want it probably to be a bit more durable. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit more sturdy, isn't it? So we'll sew down there. 
put on that. And, whoops. I didn't do my lock stitch on there, but you would do. And lock stitch down there. Okay, and then press these open. And literally, you're just going along in a row. And if so long as you keep to your um, your lines and keep you, so that you've got a quarter of an inch, you'll notice that at certain points, like I've got here, it starts to get quite a bit bulky. So what I would do then is take some of the, the tails off a little bit. Okay. Um, but it, I might do that at the next stage as it comes to sewing them in, but then it certainly helps with the finished look to getting them to, to lie completely flat. So how are we doing for time? Oh, oh, we've only, oh gosh, that's gone quickly. We've only got a couple of minutes. Okay, so shall I quickly show some hand stitching? Is yes, that okay? Because literally you get the idea, of you're going to go along, you're going to sew them all together and then you can uh, literally, when you come to sew them on, it's the same. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> you you lay them on like that, and you go in again, exactly the same, dot to dot, yeah. and pop your pin in to check, and then that one you go over and and sew on like that. So that's how they come together, and then you're squaring off at the end to you'll end up with sort of like some points. So you'll you'll square off, say there or wherever you want to go. So you might, you'll lose a bit of that one and then it makes it nice and even for you. But this was just some ideas on the um, quilting techniques. And you can see here, these are some of my, probably the quality control ones that didn't pass, <laughs> but I've jumbled them up. So it's quite nice that we've got them as a, a full bundle today. So you can see how they do work quite well. They don't do, they? don't they? Um, together. Um, that bundle, by the way, we've got less than 20 left now. So it's going really quickly. Mm. Um, and I was going to show a quick knot, quilter's knot, but we have probably haven't got time, have we? Yeah. Uh, have we? Oh, yeah. Let's go for it then. Um, so well, this will be a good, a good way to see how shaky my hands are. <laughs> but no, this is a good way to um, do your, do that. See if we can get it thread first time. But again, it, it's quite therapeutic just to sit and do some hand sewing and excuse me, I dip my very focals. I always go over my glasses to see close up. So you thread your needle and then you've got your long piece. All right, how shall I position this so you can see? Paul will probably be directing me there. So I'm holding that, that's it, I'm holding that, the tail there and then I'm wrapping it around two or three times. The more times you wrap, then the bigger the knot will be. And then the tail that I had, I'm just going to switch that over to my other hand now and hold it that way and then pull the needle through. And as I do, I have got a knot formed. Just a wee one right at the, can't really see that can you, but you have got a knot. So that's perfect for doing this kind of work. Now on here, I use my friction pen just to give me some grid lines, which you might want to do if you're new to hand stitching like me. And also, I'd use a double thread on here, which I'll, I'll cut to now because I'll probably show it better on the camera. Or you could use embroidery floss, can yeah. you? And um, just have a, a plate. It depends what sort of look you want to go for. So here I've gone very subtle with the white, but it depends how you want to create. Now I know normally they say start on the top, don't they, and pull, but because this is a bigger knot, I'm going to start from underneath on this one. And in the book, it refers to this as being big quilt stitching, I think. Yeah. Not the big stitch term. quilting. That's it, yeah. And another um, thing that I'd seen, I don't know if it was in the book, whether I'd seen this somewhere else, but was to put a little mark on your nail or a piece of tape. Yes, I've seen that. You've seen that, yeah. Or you can buy, I think you can get the thimbles that have already got it on, so that you're, you're marking your distance from A, how big you do your stitch, and then also how big the gap is that you're leaving in between your stitching. But, so you're going through all your layers. But you can see if you were sitting in front of the TV and just, you know, doing some nice relaxing stitching and because it, it's such a nice size, you're not grappling with a big quilt, yes. are you? Because um, I like to scrunch mine up, I don't know if that's the, the way you would do it, um, and have it all sort of in the hand. But 
and away you go. And I, I even got a bit carried away and, and for once I did some hand stitching for my binding as well. Oh, I, I, I always do that. Mm. I get the neatest finish when I'm hand stitching. Yeah, well, I want to say mine's probably well, definitely not as neat as yours, but <laughs> I did use the Debbie Shaw method for cutting, for joining my binding together. Oh, did you? Yeah, from, oh. uh, from your book, yeah. Because I do, I sort of like, I like to have all the books open and sometimes, even though it may be the same technique, just seeing somebody else yes. present it differently or, yeah. or a different photograph can just make it click, can't it? So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, from your quilting, uh, from your latest book anyway, yeah. Oh, thank you very much. So there we go. <laughs> so yes, enjoy. I, I do like that red um, thread on there and mm. the mixture, because you can do that as well because you, you're buying the bundle. Remember, all of these fabrics are available individually. I'll take you through those in just a second. Do you know when you're back again? Um, 22nd of September. Oh, that's ages away. away. I know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. It's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe in the new studio, who knows? I don't know. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. I don't think we'll be in there before Christmas, no. to be honest. I'll bring my own sushi there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, oh. I've, just, I've just got a feeling I'm going to turn up to work here one day and they'll all have gone. <laughs> <laughs> like, Surprise, we moved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. Okay then, well, um, I'll give you a reminder of everything that we have for you in the show um, in just a second. Quick reminder from Vix as to how you can place your order and we'll see you in a minute. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel jewellery makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Let's give you a quick reminder of this bundle of fabric while we still have it. It's been really busy for these. All three panels saves you £10. And you've got 14 left now. Um, so £10 off the usual. This is the size of each one. I can't open them all out. But this is the size that you're going to get. It's huge, 55 inches. And there is, um, oh sorry, each strip is 55 inches wide by two and a half inches in length and aren't they lovely colours for Christmas they're not they're not kind of um, what you'd expect for Christmas I don't think certainly not with the mustards but it, it really works very well and I love the subtlety as well these could be winter it doesn't have to be Christmas you know, there's not there's not Christmas trees on here per se but lots of snowflakes and gingerbread man so more more wintry I should say so that's your Christmas getting all of these they are normally £19.99 each, but not today. That wasn't very well folded. Um, this one is your Ditsy Bitsy. Down to single figures now. That's going quickly. Um, so you get four times as much as this, basically, because it's folded. So little flowers and checks with this one in beautiful colours from creams and pinks. That's a nice colour, isn't it? Like a grey-blue kind of colour. Um, so same huge pieces there. And finally, are the Misty Blues. And again, each one of those strips, 55 by two and a half. But of course, you don't have to cut them up. You could just use that as one sheet of, of stripy fabric if you prefer. So we've got, I know it's upside down again. We've got little daisies and, um, and flowers. And then the darker blues there as well. And you've got some checks and spots too. So all three for £49.97. Oh, it's oh, very high. That all three um, for £49.97. That's a saving of £10. Or you can go for them individually if you just wanted the one. Then £19.99 each. So have a look. Have a look on the website. Sewingstreet.com. The book that. Um, 
Sarah's, uh, sorry, I went, I went all blank then. Um, the book that Sarah's using is this one, it's The Joy of Jelly Rolls. And called it, and Jelly Rolls is a brand name, but she's used Moda Fabrics throughout here, so she's allowed to do, because that's a Moda name. Um, jelly Rolls, Design Rolls, Fabric Strips, whatever you call them. But as Sarah was saying, the nice thing is with this, you don't have to go out and buy a whole roll of fabric, which can be quite expensive. Um, you can just use small strips as well. I can't believe this is £9.99. That is such good value for money. There's 64 projects in, 68 projects in here altogether. So some very small, very quick projects, great for beginner sewers, even hair scrunches. Um, but using your, your um, fabric strips, you're learning lots of techniques as, in here as well if you're a new sew, or if you're new to quilting, you know, not everybody's quilted before, even if you've been dressmaking for years, this might be something that's quite new to you. Um, so there are gifts and then we've got things for the home as well and there are quilts in here as well if you wanted to make something um, bigger then there you go woven dreams um, that's the zigzag diamonds the tumbling blocks that Sarah made up border garden a simple log cabin you've only got four blocks in that but if you love that kind of look there's no reason why you can't just join more and more together and make a a bigger quilt and the same with the big quilts in reverse actually if you just used a, a couple of blocks instead of making up the whole thing then you've got a smaller quilt it's up to you so you could just have the ohio star as one one block make a placemat or something join four together for the for a lap quilt so again that's nine pounds 99 rrp is actually 12.99 on that book so you've got a, a bit of a saving there as well okay um right what's uh what am I doing in the next hour? <sighs> Dunno. Um, we've got lots of kits coming up. Oh, we're going to be looking at uh, mitered corners and I need to pinch up. Can I use some rickrack? Is that from one of the clips? Um, somebody asked, I forget names, sorry. Somebody's asking about how to sew rickrack on and I've got a couple of ideas for you there as well. So we'll, we'll, have, a, we'll have a think. Any requests, let me know. I'm only waffling a little bit now, so we're going to take a quick break, have a tidy up and see you again in a couple of minutes. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. There are two ways to shop with us, either via our website, which is www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down past the live programme and either click on the Shop Our Catalogue banner to shop via category, or shop today's products by scrolling through the list under the email newsletter sign-up form. The other way to shop is via our UK call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. Shh, don't tell anyone, but I'll be on Sewing Street soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon.
Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle Channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits, feeling good, it's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside, and it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Shh, don't tell anyone, but I'll be on Sewing Street soon. Hello and welcome back again. Now this is the last live hour. So we've got another hour after this with sewing, but this is the last live hour of the morning. And we've got a roundup of so many kits available for you. I, I like a kit because everything's there for you to be able to create something wonderful. Do you know, I, I'm completely hiding a whole tree behind me here, aren't I? Mm. This is a, um, a kit to make a Christmas Bargello tree. Isn't that amazing? Now, can you imagine this? Maybe you haven't got room for a Christmas tree. Um, this hanging on your wall at Christmas time over your bed, maybe the guest bedroom, having people around for Christmas, and then why not? Well, it's, it's not exactly even decorating, is it? It's just adding that splash of Christmas to whatever room that you're in. Um, and Bargello is such a such a, a clever technique, isn't it? You're going to be able to create some wonderful things. Um, but I think it's very clever how you get, it's almost like a, a flame shape, isn't it? It is beautiful, but very subtle. And look at what you're getting to make it. It's a big quilt. There's a lot of fabric there. You'll need your own backing fabric and you will need your own wadding as well. So that's entirely up to you. Actually, I had some really nice um, polyester wadding on the show when I was in on Sunday um, that was really, really soft. If you're going to use this as a wall hanging or even actually if it's going on a bed, if you're going to wash it, it was a really nice polyester. It was queen size as well, which is plenty big enough to make something like that and with a bit left over. So there's your instructions, everything laid out for you, all of your cutting instructions. And these are your Christmas fabrics. So you've got a bit of foiling. You've got half a meter of all of these. So we have reindeers, 
and poinsettias and ivy and holly in the gold and white and then a green spot, classic holly. Um, so there's a half meters, that's a meter of your red. And then we've got reindeer in green and holly in cream and holly in blue, and then a meter and a half of the star fabric. So that's going to be the one that you're using for the kind of the background. The background's still in strips, by the way. It, it looks as though that's just plain, but every one of these is all part of the whole Bargello strip kind of affair. So that's £69.99 for all of that fabric as well. Seven and a half metres in total, plus your instructions for your £69.99. Let's put you over there. We have another Christmas quilt kit for you here. So this was on one of the recent shows with Delphine. So instructions again. And if I just open this up to show you. The kind of size you're looking at is this. So you do have you've got a um, flying geese patch in the um, in the sashing, which is graded, which is quite nice as well. So it, it kind of goes slimmer at the top. If you just pull that down a little bit, you can see this is actually shaped like that, which is quite unusual. And then upside down again, aren't I? I keep doing that. And then these are the prints. So this obviously hasn't got um, the wadding on it. Um, and I think if I was quilting over this, I'd maybe simply just sew around or maybe echo quilt around all of these lines. You could stitch in the ditch around here. Um, so we've got the nativity scene there. And the three wise men. Are they the same? Yep, but in opposite directions. So that was very cleverly thought out. So you've got mirror images, so they're, they're facing opposite ways. And in the kit to make this are the full instructions, first of all, so that makes it easier. Quite impressive, isn't it? But easy to make. So full instructions with lots of pictures which is brilliant, loads of pictures. And then these are your actual panel pieces. It's really nice quality of fabric as well. Um, so I shan't open them all out, but you get the idea. So these are the four corner pieces. These are the pieces that you're going to make up the, um, the background and the flying geese. And then you've got the navy for the borders as well. Um, this was demonstrated on the the 27th of August, so it's, it's quite recently. So if you wanted to have a look on our YouTube channel, see the demonstration, um, flick through till you find the 27th of August. So there is half a metre, half a metre, a metre, and then your four panels there as well. And that's 49 pounds and 99 pence. So two metres of fabric plus the panels in there as well. Um, that's that, that's that. You can go there. Staying with Christmas for just a second, we have the Christmas design roll. Um, and this was in the trio, remember, we put a bundle together of three of these huge panels and you made a saving of £10, so if you just joined us. Um, rewind a little bit is great value for money. On its own, it's £19.99. And although we're saying Christmas, it's, I don't think it's that Christmassy. It's wintry. We've got snowflakes on there, but there's no Santa Claus or um, reindeers and Christmas trees and baubles and things like that. It's more, a little bit more classic Christmas, I think. So we've got gingerbread men. I'm sure they're jammy dodgers. And... Um, but even little, you know, the little flowers and colour-wise, it ranges from the greens through to mustardy colours and then on to that really deep, what colour would you call that, rusty kind of colours, I think. And that's £19.99. I might, I might make, I think I'll, I'll make something with that in a minute. I don't know what to make. Something with bias binding because was it Pauline who wanted to see mitered corners? So we'll, we'll have a go. I don't know what to make, but we'll have a go at something. Hi, Anne. 
just say I was going to buy the three panels trio, but it's different on the website. Oh, we'll have a look at that. One panel is Christmas colour. I rang, but the core team couldn't help. That's the one you're going to get anyway. That, that is the Christmas. So there's the Christmas, there's the blue, and then there's the little... Um... Oh, Brenda's got, got hers. She's got the three of those. Hi, Michaela. Right. That's when you get in the bundle anyway. Now then. We don't have... I'm going to open this one up because these fabrics are amazing. I should be very careful. Um, the... Oh, I'll never get these back in neatly like this. I can't remember the guest's name when she came in with this one. Oh. Sorry, I should find that. Um, a a folding skills, amazing. I think, um, I think they've been trained in folding at the shop. Um, <laughs> fabric's absolutely incredible. So that's the quilt that you're going to be able to make. And these are the fabrics that she's put together. Um, very slightly foiled. They're, they're quite big. I said fold, folding's amazing. And you have the crane. It's beautiful. You've got the, the mottled grey. That, that again, it's got a tiny little bit of, of foiling, but it's really elegant. Yvonne, that was it. It was Yvonne that came in uh, to demonstrate these. So more cranes. And look at that, it's gold, but it's not glitzy, shiny gold. It's just elegant. You've got the black and then the dark greys there as well. The quilt that you're going to make is absolutely striking. It really is. But it's all squares. You know, the, the cornerstones, all squares. These are just all squares. That's one big square. So it does come together very quickly. And it's a very simple, you see that, just squares. That's all it is. But it looks amazing. It looks, looks so expensive. So that would make a nice gift as well, wouldn't it? If you know somebody who's a quilter, just as it is, just like that, not, not even making it up, I think that would be very well appreciated. I'm glad I didn't undo those. They've all gone back in again. Okay, in you go. Go on. There we go. Right, now we have, um, oh gosh, we've got so many kits. Home is where the heart is, is this one. And this is another one from Yvonne. Um, I shan't take all of the fabrics out. Okay, here we shall, here we shall. Gonna do it, gonna do it. You want to see what you're gonna buy. Um, again, it's, uh, this is a small, it's about that big, the little quilt that, um, that you make with this one. Full instructions are included again. Excellent folding, I have to say. And these are the fabrics that you're going to use. I love that one with the little bobbins on it, look. And buttons, and tape measures, and spots. So even the planes aren't plain, it's a white on white. And then you've got, it looks like denim, but it's a, it's a cotton coloured to look like denim. And there's your, uh, all of the templates are in there as well. You'll need some bond wear um, to put the hearts on. You can arrange the hearts wherever you want to. You can make more of them. You could have less of them. You could use free motion embroidery to apply them or you could hand sew them. A blanket stitch, I think, would look very nice. Um, and again, that's just 16, six, that's good, isn't it? 16 pounds 99. Great value. There we go. Oh, almost. Just fold that over. Um, we've got some applique pictures from Catherine Wright from the Craft Centre in Leicestershire Craft Centre. So first up, oh there we go. Um, uh, uh, there's everything that you need in here. So that one's the, the green and purple. So the hoops included, the buttons are included, your instructions are in there. You've got your um, backing fabric, all of this, and of course your fabrics there. So we don't have an actual sample to show you, but that's what you're going to be able to make. That's £18. And this was on, on the 24th of August. So again, if you want to have, once you bought it, the nice thing is the sensory, you put everything on YouTube and it stays there. 
Um, so you'll, you'll never miss a demo. It's always going to be there. So if you scroll down to the 24th of August, that's where you're going to find a demonstration for the kit. So this is the second colour option. So same idea, you've got all of your, your fabrics and your hoop and your instructions and everything inside there. And that's the little picture you're going to be able to make. Um, but this is the orange and blue option. So very different look, I think, but they go nicely together if you went for one of each. So pale blues and oranges, and then you've got the little hexagon type fabrics there as well. Back in fabric, hoop, instructions, all in the box, £18. Oh, that trio bundle, remember, from the last hour, um, sold out now, completely gone. So well done for getting hold of those. We do have all of those panels available individually, but as a bundle all together, they've gone. Um, should we do a bit of a demo? So I thought, let me have some of this. Bigger tables in the new studio would be good. Not going to happen. I thought the Christmas panel went rather well with the early bird, particularly the, um, the mustardy kind of colours. That looks nice, doesn't it? But we've had a couple of questions earlier on, one about rickrack. I've only got a little bit of rickrack here, but we'll have a go. And... Oh, we do have Rickrack on the website, but it might be, if you, if you go to the website, which by now you probably know that we share with Jewelry Maker, um, and you type in Rickrack, it'll either find it on the Jewelry Maker website or on our website. We've got a feeling it might be a Jewelry Maker product. Um, let's, I'm going to chop right into the middle of this. Normally, oh, no extra postage if you ordered anything from Jewelry Maker, by the way, because we're all in, in one house, so to speak. If you've already paid your 3.95 postage from something earlier on, you still don't get charged, charged any postage again. Um, I'd normally use a rotary cutter for this, but I'm going to just do this with the scissors because it's so big. This is easier. That'll do. And let's cut a few strips. Oh, we could do a little bit of crazy patchwork, couldn't we? I was going to do that earlier on, but we wouldn't have had time, but I can do it now. We will do a crazy patchwork placemat, and then I can put, I can do, um, I can do some binding around it then, can't I? So uh, yeah, I'll cut, I'll cut all of these out. So do talk amongst yourselves, have a chat with each other while you're on Facebook. Oh, and if you know why Rick Rack is called Rick Rack, I'd love to know. Paul Director is searching the internet as we speak, trying to find out. Oh, we, it used to be called Wave Crochet Braid. How did that get shortened to Rick Rack? Rick Rack. <laughs> You're searching Rick Rack facts now. Okay, so that would do. I'm not cutting them all the way down. And with a crazy patchwork, you don't have to be particularly accurate. I'll do the binding in this one. So I'll cut a longer piece so it goes all the way around. Because I don't know how big this is going to be yet. And I should have saved some of that. Oh, I've got it down there. Is that it? I should have saved some of the H640. I've just got a huge piece of the polyester wadding down there, but I don't think I should put into it. Right. Whoops, that wasn't very straight. All right, and I want one more bit and then I'm done, so bear with me. There we go. Do you know Sarah's right? This is such a good quality fabric. It's really nice and sturdy. 100% cotton and designed and printed in the UK. Okay, right. So I'll use that for the back. No, I won't. I'll use the green one for the backing. So that can go there. Let's chop these off. I should use that for the backing, really, shouldn't I? I'll use that for the backing. I'm making it up as I go along, can you tell? 
Right, so I am going to use my rotary cutter now because I want to cut that very square. And there's my ruler. There's my cutter. It's a studio on it just so that nobody walks away with it. Right, so we'll have that there. And that wasn't very straight, was it? We'll have it that big. And just cut that square. I love my Alpha Rotary Cutter. This is obviously the Studios, but it's the same brand that I use. I think it's just because you, you get used to something and I've always used Alpha. I, I just find them very easy to use. Left or right handed, nice and sharp, and it locks. And always make sure you get into the rather good habit of locking it every time you finish using it. They're very sharp. All right, that can go there. Oh, there's some H640. That'll do. Is that big enough? Yeah. I, did, I, use, I use so much of this, really. Um, right, just need to switch my iron on. Oh, so many wires down. There's so many irons down here, actually. And ironing board. We'll do that in a bit. Let's cut this down a little bit. Scissors. I'll line them in a minute. So that's the kind of size that we're doing. So I'm going to cut that just a little bit bigger so I can trim it down and make it square later. And I'm going to sew my fabric strips to the fleece. So I don't need you yet. And I'm going to do a jaunty angle, so you don't have to be precise at all. Um, so I'm so, actually that's rather big, isn't it? It's going to take ages. Um, so I'm just going to lay the strips over here like so. I'm going to start in the corner with one strip. Let's start with a, a little end like that, um, like that. One strip just to cover the corner, and then my second strip I'm going to plonk over the top and sew right sides together. Um, you could do these in, in an exact straight line, but there again, it doesn't seem the point when you've already got straight lines here. Um, so I'm going to put it a little bit like that, so it overlaps but at an angle. And then I'm going to flip and then carry on sewing at odd angles like that. Pin it if you like. Oh, I've still got a quarter inch foot on there. Just need to change that foot. Back to the standard one. You don't need any particular seam allowance when you're sewing like this. It's a great way of using up scraps of fabric, but it does look quite effective. Okay, so that goes over here. Sew straight down. There you go. So that and that and then we've stitched, now we're going to flip. So that's the line I've stitched, flip it over. I'm not pressing it just yet. Or oh, I could do actually a little stick it down, that's a good idea. Um, because I'm going straight on to the H640, that's going to stick. And then the next strip is going to go at another jaunty angle, the right sides together. Just make sure that when, you, when you're lining those up, you don't do that because when you sew, then you're going to get a gap behind there. So they do need to kind of overlap to a certain degree. And then we'll sew. Oh, people are asking about the panel. There are different sections. I'm just using like the... Um, the yellowy colour, but you do get all of the colours. There's a the green section, there's the red section, and then there's the yellow section as well. It's a huge panel. Each one of the strips, oh, that was a little bit short, so I need to make sure I overlap that. Um, but it's not a choice of colours. You do get all of the colours. Right, let's do that. Brenda says it looks kind of mustardy. It's more 
Now this is sand, I would say, sandy. It's not as warm as mustard. Biscuit kind of colours. I would say, anyhow. Right, and again with the iron. Remember, I've got the H640 here, which is fusible. So every time I'm pressing this open, I'm actually fusing it to the backing. And I'm not putting the backing on the backing, if that makes sense. If I was using a wool wadding with this, um, or a wool polyester blend or something, I'd put a backing on the fabric purely to stop the, um, the frayed bits. Uh, sorry, the, the, the fluff from going into my sewing machine. But there isn't any fluff on this because it's polyester. So I don't mind, oops. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind just sewing straight onto this. That I think can go, that needs to go there. That can go there. And so, and again, no particular skill required. It's scraps of fabric. Um, obviously, these are the two and a half inch strips, but if you've got um, smaller pieces of fabric or narrower pieces of fabric would work. They don't have to be uniform and, and the same width and everything. Let's chop that off and iron. Oh, I was going to do this rick rack. Let's do some rick rack now. Oh, but it's too long for the rick rack. <laughs> I can't find the rick rack now. Oh, there we go. Oh, a bit too short. We'll have, we'll have to wait till we come to the other side of the centre to put the rick rack on. Put that back a bit there. All right, we can turn this around now, I think. And let's have one of the. I might have to go into a different colour and flip that over and go that way. Where are we? About half past. Right. And so. It's quite fun making things like this. Nice to see how they evolve and you can never make two exactly the same because you're putting them on at all different angles. There's no measurements or patterns or anything like that included. You're just kind of going for it. Okay. Once we get beyond the centre point, it'll be quite quick to come down the other side. Um, and it's something that you could add maybe ribbons to or a little bit of lace in between the panels would look nice. Let's see how far we get because I do want to put a little bit of binding around this. I might not I might not get quite all the way down it. In fact, shall we do that just so I make sure I do get there. So imagine I've finished all of that. Then I'm going to, it looks effective, doesn't it? Then I'm going to trim it down, or half of it, like so. Don't need you. And you go there. Okay, and then we'll do one, one corner to show, I think it was Pauline was asking about um, mitered corners. So I'll just do a little bit to show you. I like to use two inch wide bias binding. Have I used that really long strip? I think I did, didn't I? And this is two and a half, so I'm going to cut it down a bit. And I didn't cut that very straight anyway, so it's a good opportunity to trim it. So let's trim off that wonky edge there. Turn it over and then I'll cut that two inches wide, which is there. Right, and then I'll iron that to make it into a bind. It's not bias, it doesn't need to be bias if you're sewing in a straight line. So it's just binding this one. But let's do a double fold, a uh, single fold, sorry. So that means we're going to iron to the centre. If you've got a bias tape maker, it makes life a lot easier. Um, but just on small projects like this, it's not too time consuming to just fold that over yourself. 
So we'll fold that in half. That would make a double fold bias binding, but I'm going to do single. So binding, sorry, it's not bias, bias, Deborah. That goes to the center. I have to say our mat is very mucky. Hmm, all this stuff, look, somebody's been sticking stuff on it. Probably me. Right, to the center. And this side. There we go. Almost there. Now then, if you were going to machine sew on both sides at this point, I'd fold it in half again. And then you can just wrap this around the edge of your project and sew through both pieces. I'm not going to with this one, because I like to hand sew the back of it. I think it makes it so much more accurate for me anyway. And I like hand sewing. So we will have the backing and the top and I'll just line up those corners and I'd normally have a little bit of 505 spray there but I don't have any with me so I'm just going to hold all the layers together with a couple of pins. So right, mitered corner. You're going to sew and normally with, with binding, on something like this, um, fold the end over to start with. And that means when you come back round again, the next side tucks inside and it gives a nice neat finish. So I'm going to open out the bias binding and line up the edges and sew down the crease line. But I'm going to stop. I don't normally mark it or measure it or anything because you kind of get used to it. Um, this is half an inch wide. So I'm going to sew all the way down this crease line and stop half an inch before I get to the end. So there's the end, there's my half inch, so that's where I'm going to stop. So I've kind of got a half inch box in the corner there. And when I stop, I'm going to reverse a few stitches and then take the work out completely. This is just the way that I do it. I'm going to switch off and on again because this is on the quarter of an inch setting, which I don't want. Oh, it didn't switch off. There we go. So along that crease line. And remember, I'm going to stop it. So I don't normally mark it. That's just so that you can see what I'm doing. I'll, I'll take this out and show you in a sec. So right up to the mark, a couple of stitches backwards, take it out. And then I'm going to fold this edge so it's lined up with this edge. And as I'm doing that, so that goes around there like that. So those two edges are lined up and I'm getting a triangle formed here. So make sure this is all nice and square and that's a perfect little triangle and then start sewing right from the edge here and carry on down the side. So lining up those raw edges. I don't tend to pin. And then you'll carry on going round. And then to make the mitre, When you open this up and fold it, but and I love this. Oh, I, I love a neat mitered corner. It's, it makes me go all fuzzy. So let's fold this around the edge. Push it out. And you've got a nice neat corner there. On the back, now I like to do this by hand. Um, so I'd fold over and then fold over again and then do a slip stitch by hand. Um, and you'll need to cover that stitch line. Now there's nothing wrong with trimming back a little bit of this if necessary, because at the moment when I fold that over, it's making a bit of a lump underneath there and I don't want that. So this can be trimmed back, pull that over, slip stitch. Then when you get to that corner, watch this, watch this. 
just maneuver it again. So you've sewn there, sewn there, sewn there. That goes in there, that folds over there, and then carry on sewing. Look, you've got a really lovely sharp pointy corner. That is so satisfying. I love doing that. So that's the way that I do. So I hope that's helped. Um, I was going to do a little bit of rick rack, rick rackiness. So let's a couple of ways. The thing is, when you put in rick rack into a seam, um, so I was just looking to see if there's an off cut without cutting any more of this up, but there isn't, so I'll just cut away. Uh, so this is your early bird, you've got a pound saving on this one. So well done. Oh, we this fabric just sells out so many times. You get a metre and a half in the bundle and you've got a, a bit of a saving. And it's really soft, it's a really nice fabric to use. Okay, so if I wanted to add rick rack into a seam, let's do that. Um, I want to put, let's say it's on a, 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 across a cushion cover maybe. And I want, want to add just a little bit of a strip of rick rack to decorate it. Haven't chosen the best colour really, have I? Um, but this is the way that I do it for ease. You see, if you're sewing it in between two pieces of fabric, then you don't see it and you've got to be really accurate when you're sewing. But this is quite an easy way of doing it. So fold that over and press it. Then I'm going to use a glue pen. And just, these are on the website. You see so often. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue across here. It'll dry clear, don't worry about that. And it washes out as well. So we've got that. Then I'm going to stick the rick rack so that it's just, I need that closer to the edge. Just peeping out over the top. So I'll put that on there like that. And then you can arrange it. Oh, that's pretty good actually. <laughs> I'm so good. <laughs> um, so I've just got the lump so you don't see the actual S, S bit of it. And then you can pop that over the top of the second part and then sew. So if I was going to put a piece of rick rack in between these pieces, for instance, that's the way that, that I would do it. So I'm not going to sew that because that's the only bit of rick rack that I've got. Um, another nice thing with rick rack, I mean, if you're going to do that inner seam, if you literally wanted it around the edge or something like that, I'd still glue it in place first of all. And then you're going to have to... So we do that. So that would be glued down and then your second fabric goes on top. And this is very narrow so you wouldn't have a very big seam allowance. And then try and sew straight down the centre if you can. So actually, I wouldn't normally use a friction pen on that. So if that's all glued down there, I would do that. And then I can see exactly where the edge of the rick rack is and I can sew halfway down because the last thing that you want is to have, you know, a, a lump where you see a little bit and then it disappears. So you can see exactly where that is. But another nice thing you can do with a rick rack, if you get a couple of different colours, you can make a really nice trim by twisting them, not necessarily with the same colour, but you can actually kind of join, how do we do this, that was it. Join the pieces together just by wrapping them around each other like that. And it makes a, a really nice effect. So if you use two colours for it, it can be quite, quite strong. It looks like a plait almost when you twist them together. So that's, that's just another little idea with Rick Rack for you. That, that works really well. So under there, over there. You get the idea. Just have, have a play with them. Have a play with those. Rick Rack's on the website. You need to search Rick Rack. Pens on the website, search glue pens, search rotary cutter. Um, we've got some more, um, they do look sandy, don't they? Yeah, that, that's uh, the, the colour of the Christmassy panels there. Um, I think I, th I would have said sand. We have some living in loveliness panels here too. Get that out of the way. 
and we've got that one as well. So this one is the craft clutch kit. Um, that's what you're going to make, but we've got a different colour for you here. So inside here, we've got the zip panels. Individual little pockets, so there's two of those. It doesn't have to be for your crafty bits and bobs. That could be for makeup brushes or pencils or anything like that. Keep your jewellery in if you're going travelling, or maybe. And inside the package, which comes to you all wrapped up like this as well, on tissue paper, is everything that you need. So your magnetic snap, that's included. Your wadding is included, that's a nice wool blend. And then these are the colours of the fabrics that you're going to receive in this kit. So it's like patchwork hexagons and roses in there. And the two zips are included. And you have your full instructions with photographs here as well. We're down to limited stock on these ones now. So it's £24.99 for everything that you need. So including your wadding, don't have to go out and buy anything else. All you need is your scissors and thread. And a sewing machine. Okay, you could do it by hand, I suppose. Tiny stitches if you do. But that's what you're going to be able to make. And the second kit we have from Kerry and this makes a trio, so it makes all three. So there's the little box back. You've got different fabrics to these, but you know, so you get an idea of what they actually are. Oh, Brenda's off to work. Brenda's in Kentucky. Um, it's 6.45 a.m. Oh, you were up early with us this morning, Brenda. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Have a good day at work. Just bye. Bye. Um, so the box bag and the storage cube and the pyramid bag. So three projects in this one. Let's have a look what the fabric's like in this one. All right. This is pretty. So that's the same as that one, isn't it? So we've got the pale green again with roses. These are all Riley Blakes. And the smaller flower, I like that with the stripe behind it. And what does this say? Truth, freedom, beauty, love, fresh from the garden, thank you. But it's quite subtle, isn't it? Um, full instructions, your patterns are in there as well. So you've got the full size patterns, yes. Lovely, so all of your patterns included. It's quite a bundle, this, and that's £29.99. and pence. So there's quite a lot in there. And you've got your designer fabric, remember, that's your Riley Blake. And again, that's what you're going to be able to make. So three projects for £29.99. I'm not, I'm not as good as Kerry is doing that. Um, right, what else have we got down here? Books. Pop you there. There. We have Tilda Quilt's book. Let's get a bin down there, everything goes on the floor. Um, Tilda Quilts and Pillows to Sew with Love. Le very nice in Tilda Fabric. We had loads of Tilda Fabric in the second hour this morning at nine o'clock. So if you wanted to make something genuine Tilda, have a look on the website. This is um, £14.99. Again, it doesn't have to be Tilda Fabrics. But Tilda's all about the lifestyle, isn't it? It's the quality, but it's just that instantly recognisable look. That's pretty. Um, scrap flowers, lots of different designs in here. Oh, look, teapots. Teapots and coffee pots. All your full instructions, your layouts, little houses. No. Um... Really pretty fabrics, aren't they? But it's about the style. You can make these, or you can make them in black and white. You can do any, anything you like. We did that in a show, didn't we? We had a guest doing cats, and it was a cushion. I think that was Delphine, wasn't it, came in. And so she made a cushion like that, with the cats on it. Been busy for books this morning. I do like a book. I know it sounds odd, but when you, when you get a, a, a new book, I love the smell of a new book. It's like the smell of a new carpet. I don't know, just a nice, nice smell. 
and I tend to get my book home and I'll have a flick through and look at the projects then I'll have another flick through and then I'll have a look at the techniques and see if there's anything that um, anything I don't know anything I can learn and then I start to use it that's when the spine gets cracked and I don't have an issue with people doing that because it means the book's been well used and well well loved and I'll turn back pages I don't rip, rip them out but I will turn back pages um, of favorite projects or things that I need to go back to and I think that's that's what it's all about. I like that. I like, like beach huts, aren't they? Plum Garden Village. Okay, this is um, a 14... This is a, a good heavy book for £14.99 as well. Just looking for an RRP because I'm sure it should be more than that. Can't see it. Um, £14.99. We've got some, some great value books actually on the website, haven't we? Just check and see if you've got any more messages because I know we're, we're almost out of time and I don't want to miss anybody. Um, what should we have a look at next? We've still got loads of stuff here, haven't we? Let's have a look at the, where have I put it? The Flying Geese Christmas Quilt Kit. In here. Um, we've, you've got four panels, I'll show you on the big one in just a second, but four panels here and then a metre of the green, half a metre red and half a metre of the blue. So you're getting all of that and your full instructions, cutting instructions and everything are all in here. And then this is what you're going to make with it. Well, you know, you don't have to, you can make four cushion covers out of it if you preferred. Need some extra fabric of your own to use as backing. Um, so you've got the nativity and it's quite nice because they're, they're mirror image. So if you are making, you know, if you've got cushion covers, they're going to be facing each other, which is a nice idea. And the flying geese are actually tapered, which is um, a nice technique too. But you've got all your instructions on how to do that. So you're going to find it quite simple. £49.99, you'll need to buy your own backing fabric and you'll need your own wadding there as well. So you can use whatever you like. Right. Oh, that wasn't very neat. Now then, the cushions behind me here. This one. Oh, I've dropped that on the floor. It's so messy down here. That goes with that. That goes with that. This is sweet, isn't it? How summery is this? Um, you do actually get three sets of instructions with this one. So you can make... When we get to our new studio. Um, <laughs> eat your own cushion, <laughs> which is this one. There you go. And you've got all of the templates that are all drawn in there as well, so you can just trace those off. And we've got all these step-by-step -step instructions too. And she'll show you how to do free motion embroidery as well. So that's Eat Your Own Cushion. Sometimes feel like I have. Um, eat Your Own Vegetable Bag, which is this one. Do you know, that's a quite nice to actually take to the supermarket, because we, we're tending to do that, aren't we? To put your veg and things in instead of putting them in... Um, in single use plastic bags or paper bags for that matter and then we have eat your own apron which is this one um do a quick disclaimer don't eat your own cushions or your own aprons or your own bags do, you know just just saying so two pockets at the front there now these are on on the 8th of august have a look at the cushion while you're there as well um, and she'll show you, if you have a look back through YouTube and have a look at the show, um, Delphine will show you her free motion skills. It's, what, it's like doodling with needle and thread really, it's something that I really enjoy doing. But it's a great way of applying applique as well. It gives a, a sketchy kind of look. Um, so she's free motion, the, the sky, the clouds, the birds, the fence and all of the applique pieces and the vegetables in the vegetable plot. Uh, the grass is all free motion. So the nice thing is you don't have to be particularly accurate when you're doing it this way. Um, so it makes it really easy as well. So all instructions for all three projects and fabrics as well, exclusive to us, Sewing Street. So you've got your five inch squares and your cream fabric as well. Um, and there's lots in there too. 
all for £39.99. So quick flick through. Really pretty fabrics there, look. Really gorgeous. Um, we do have another project from Delphine as well, don't we? Which is the ballet dance here. This one. Don't, I don't have the finished one from it, but um, we got the pictures. We've got a happy camping cushion and cathedral window pin cushion. Get all of this. Mum and me bird cushion and the mini hexi coasters. So all of the instructions you're getting to make all four of those. There's your bundle web for the applique and you've got your white fabric this time and your five inch squares and these are all Bon Voyage, bon voyage Tilda. Um, very limited for these, we've only got a handful left now. Again, that's £49.99. Um, when they sell out, we will hopefully be able to put the kit back together again for you, but it won't be with the Tilda fabric. So if you particularly wanted the Tildas, then please could you order as soon as you can. 40 pieces in the charm pack. And you've got a metre of the white cotton fabric as well. Doesn't, doesn't look... Oh, on the website, doesn't look like the white's there. It's probably because it's on a white background, but you do get the white. You do get the white as well. So, uh, four patterns, all very, very, very clearly um, written out. Lots and lots of pictures. <laughs> this is what happens at the end of hour four. Can't talk at all. Um, and in a fabric to make all of those as well, which I, I think again is it's a great deal, it's a great bundle. Oh, la, oh, how do you pronounce? I'm sorry if I get this wrong. Uh, Lack Lack beer, Lack beer, from Kenya. Hello to you. Hi Pat. Um, oh yeah, Chrissy, have a look on YouTube or um, just oh you can rewind on the website apparently so if you go to samestreet.com you'll see a video there you can rewind it uh, you can't fast forward it because that would be traveling into the future one day um or facebook is um is always going to have the the video there after the end of the show rig rack is named after the chinese method of wrapping a firework i didn't know that thank you julie Um, we had a message about Wendy Orlando's kits. I'm afraid I can't remember the name. Um, oh, Wendy's got a poof cushion. Bear with me. You get your panel and your instructions. Oh, you don't get those. Oh, I'm getting so messy. In the new studio, when, when I can bring my personal assistant with me, my product passer inner and outer. It took me ages to audition the, the product passer inners or outers. Um, so this is what you're going to be able to make. And this is the panel. Like that. Again, all exclusive to Sewing Street. Shan't open it all up, but you know, you get the idea. And you've got the plain fabric as well. And there's all of your full instructions. And again, with pictures, as you would expect. That's really nice, that's really nice, isn't it? Really comfy. Oh, and you get a bag of toy filling as well, which is fallen off. That's your toy filling. So you get all of that. That's good, isn't it, for £24.99? Um, so the only thing you're going to need to add is, um, is your own cushion pad. Fabulous value. Okay, we're just about out of time today. Um, I'm going to be back again tomorrow. I'm not in this weekend, but I will be back again tomorrow. So it'd be nice if you could join me at eight o'clock in the morning. And this is what we're going to be doing. A makeup brush roll with Jenny McCreary. Uh, I don't think Jenny's in the studio, but we've, um, we've got a video of her making that one up. At nine o'clock, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Again, um, 10 o'clock, it's, um, oh, that's my Lone Star cushion panels. We've got some new fabric bundles put together for you. Um, we've got overlockers and dressmaking at 11 o'clock in the morning. Oh, maybe we'll have a look at how to change the blade. That was one of the questions from earlier, wasn't I? Wasn't it? And then the yo-yo bag that was showed this morning at nine o'clock is going to be repeated at, um, at 12 o'clock. 
So it's been lovely to have your company this morning. Thanks for all of your comments on Facebook. Um, I will have a flick back through after the show and just make sure that I haven't haven't missed anybody out. So it'd be nice if you could join us again um, tomorrow morning. I should look forward to hearing from you then. And meanwhile, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.